Hello friends, this is Muse Fanfiction, how are you all? So in this video, we will see, what if Naruto inherited the bloodline of mythical adamantium titans Naruto x Fullmetal Alchemist. But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time, let's begin the story. Minato Namikaze, Yandaimi Hokage and Kuroi Senko of Kanahagakur, stood pacing outside the delivery room for the news of his wife and child. He paced silently as his friend, Sum Inazuka, watched him. Sum was the head of the Inazuka clan and also a longtime friend of both Minato and Kashina Uzumaki, Minato's wife. She was currently pregnant with her second child, her current daughter being four years old, and was barely showing. She sighed as she watched Minato wear a hole in the floor and said, quit pacing. She's strong, just believe in her and wait already. Minato looked at his friend and sighed. I'm sorry, I'm just anxious about the delivery. He replied. Soom nodded her head, yes yes, but you're making me nervous. You can't do anything at the moment so just sit and calm down for when you are needed. She replied. Minato went to open his mouth before the surgery, Light went off and both people turned to the door to see Tsunade of the Sanin walking out smiling brightly. Well, the delivery was a success and you have a healthy baby boy Minato. Congratulations, you can go to the maternity ward anytime, she said before she was twirled around anime style as Minato tore through the doors next to her and rushed to the maternity ward. Both women chuckled before joining him. Maternity ward, Kashina Uzumaki, the Red Death of Konoha sat in a bed smiling brightly as she cradled her newborn son, Naruto. The name came from Jiraiya's book and the idea that the little bundle would be a maelstrom of activity if he was anything like his parents. Suddenly, the doors flew open and Minato froze as he stared at his newborn son. A smile crept its way onto his face before becoming what would soon be dubbed, Naruto's prankster smile, and he walked over to his wife. He stroked her hair and ed her head before she spoke, beautiful ain't he? She asked. Minato nodded and said, he may look like me but I'll bet he has your personality. Both of the parents chuckled at that. Tsunade and Soom walked in and smiled brightly seeing their friends so happy. Unfortunately, it was not to last. An Anbu burst into the room. Hokage-sama, the Kyubi has been spotted heading this way. It will be here within the hour. He said. Minato swiftly rose and Kashina began to shake as she had an idea of what would happen. Hold it off, keep it from the village whilst I figure out a way to stop it. Minato said before turning to Kashina. Kashina held her child fiercely and glared at her husband. Absolutely not Minato, you know as well as I what life Jinchiriki led. I will not subject my son to that horror, she said. Minato looked downcast and said, I know that. However, with you here and Tsunade and Jiraiya, not to mention Soom and our other friends, he won't live that life. You can prevent it and make sure he's the hero everyone should see him as. Kashina wavered for a second before shaking her head again. No, she stated and glared at her husband who sighed before shun shining to his home. She looked to her friends. Soom spoke, Kushi Chan, what would you say to a marriage contract between my daughter and your son? She asked. Kashina looked shocked, what? You want our children to marry one another? She asked. Soom nodded, it would be a good way to let little Naruto here not have to worry about finding love. You know that Inazukas are fiercely loyal and if Hana consents when they are of age, then why not let the two of them have a chance, besides, it'll keep those civilians off your back. Soom said with a smirk. The contract would let her be closer to her friends and would be mutually beneficial to both clans and parents. If it didn't work out, then nothing was lost as contracts allowed the couple to decline when they were to be wed. Kashina thought about it for a moment before nodding, yes I agree. Tsunade will you take care of the paperwork? I don't want to leave Naruto here, she said. The other women smiled and bowed before leaving the new mother and setting off to take care of the marriage contract. Tsunade looked at Sum and said, you know Minato is going to wear her down right? She asked. Sum nodded that is one of the reasons for this contract. I will let my daughter know and hopefully Hannah can be someone precious to the boy. I just hope that this all works out, she said before they both disappeared in shunshuns. With Minato, 
It had only been 20 minutes since he had spoken to Kashina and he had already found the seals he needed to make his son a Jinchuriki. He didn't want to do it but he firmly believed in his village, his friends, and, most of all, his wife. Besides that, Naruto was the only newborn in the village. He decided to give one last gift to Naruto before he left. He grabbed all his sealing books and large amounts of materials, with the Horatian notes and details among them, and separated them into several different sections before mass sealing them into a scroll with some blood on it. He gathered his things before taking one last look at his home. He sighed before sealing it one last time and taking a scroll he had made for the sandame when the sealing was done. Hopefully, everything would be just fine. Too bad no one ever told Minato that life is never fair. With Kashina and Naruto, Kashina was sitting in the hospital bed smiling happily at the little boy in her arms. She could already tell he would look like his father, and probably have a fanbase to boot. She held him gently but tensed when she felt the familiar buildup of chakra before a shunshun. She looked up and sighed as she saw Minato once again stand before her, and he didn't look like he was playing around. Kashina-chan, he started, my answer is the same as before Minato. I refuse to allow you to seal Kayubi into Naruto. His life will be horrible no matter what we do, she said sternly while glaring at her husband. Naruto is the only child who was born. If there was anyone else, I wouldn't even ask. Besides, I have faith that this village will honor my dying wish and our friends will help him. He said, but, most of all, you will be there to care for him. Because I won't get that chance. Please Kashina-chan, he begged. Kashina stared at her husband a million thoughts rushing through her head. She looked down at her sweet, innocent baby boy and sighed. I, promise me that if these people won't honor him that I can leave with him and not be pursued. She said with pleading eyes. She knew Minato wouldn't give up and there really was no other alternative. She just wished it didn't have to be this way. Minato nodded and quickly unrolled the scroll before adding it to the conditions he had given Sarutobi. It's done Kashina-chan. He walked over to her and hugged her while putting their heads together so they could stare at their son. He's gonna be a lady killer when he grows up, Minato said with a smile. As if knowing his dad was speaking about him, Naruto opened his eyes to show two beautiful sapphire orbs. Kashina let out a barking laugh, yeah, but he won't have to worry about his fans once I am through with him. She said with tears in her eyes. Minato nodded and ed Kashina on the head before taking Naruto into his arms. I'll have Sarutobi bring him back soon. I love you, he said before vanishing in a yellow flash. Kashina gripped the sheets as the first roars of the Kayubi made itself known over Konoha. Tears fell from her face and stained the sheets below until she heard a voice speak. I'm afraid that you won't be able to live up to your husband's expectations. I cannot allow you to interfere with my master's plan, said a man with an orange spiral mask. Kashina's head whipped up and she glared at the man. She readied herself to fight, but, before she could act, the man spoke again, I will ensure that my master wins this day. Kamui, he said opening his eye. Kashina felt the fabric of reality twist and turn and she let loose a roar of maternal fury and launched herself at the man with a hidden kanai. Surprised by her actions and the sudden inclusion of a massive amount of Yuki-infused killing intent, K.I., the man was taken unaware and stabbed fatally in the heart. His eye, however, was unaffected and Kashina's roar faded as the man's body turned to dust and she disappeared from reality. With Sarutobi, after the ceiling, Sarutobi picked up young Naruto and frowned at the boy. Things were not supposed to be this way. He looked around the Hokage's office and sighed deeply. It had been nearly five hours since the ceiling. He had received distressing news just a moment ago, the Kayubi's attack had destroyed the maternity ward where Kashina was supposedly staying. They had yet to find her body. Tsunade had, apparently, seen the destruction and, believing that both Kashina and Naruto were inside, fled from Konoha almost immediately after two hours of searching the rubble. Now, he was once again the Hokage and he needed to report to the council about the Kayubi and the rumors of a demon child. He held no illusions that Naruto's life would never be normal, however, he did hope to give his surrogate grandson as normal of a life as possible. Minato would have wanted as much for his child. He sighed once again and pulled out a simple genjutsu tag and placed it on the boy's head. 
It would deter anyone but Sarutobi from making the connection between Naruto and the Yondaimi until it was reapplied or the seal itself was noticed and destroyed by an experienced Genjutsu user or put out when flooded with enough chakra to summon Gamabunta nearly 20 times. The only one currently able to destroy the seal would be the Sandame or Jiraiya if he ever looked close enough. Sarutobi, still carrying Naruto made his way through the tower, down some stairs, and through a pair of large double doors before being assaulted by the ruckus that was the council of Kanahagakur. The room quickly quieted, however, when they noticed the bundle in his hands. Some thought it was the demon child, civilians some thought it was an important child, clan heads like Soom, but three others thought of it as a weapon, Danzo and the elders. Sarutobi quickly made his way to his seat and set the child in front of him. He took a breath before making his announcement. The Yondaimi Hokage has died and left me with the title of Hokage once again. I gladly serve this country once more. After a moment of praise and happy comments, he continued, Now, in the aftermath of the attack, we are down by 40% of our shinobi forces, several residential and merchant buildings have been either destroyed or damaged, and we have a rather delicate matter to attend to aside from those problems. He said gaining the attention of everyone in the room, including Jiraiya. Sarutobi pointed to the boy and said, Yandaimi Sama was able to defeat Kayubi by sealing it into this newborn babe. He didn't get a chance to start another sentence as cries of, Demon child. And, kill it, were heard throughout the room before the Sandame sighed and unleashed his full key on the petty fools. Enough, he roared, I will not kill this child, Naruto Uzumaki. From this point forth, Anyone who talks about the Kayubi being sealed into Naruto will be killed for revealing an S-ranked secret. He said. Several people grumbled but ultimately gave in. Danzo, however, wasn't so easy to put down. I request the boy be put into my root program. We can have the boy be conditioned to serve only Konoha and to never question our orders this way. He could even learn to control the beast inside him. He said. Jiraiya and Sarutobi both glared at the man before the Sandame spoke once again. Absolutely not Danzo, I will not have an emotionless Jinchuriki running around the village. You will stay away from him and the boy will be allowed to live a normal life. A.M. I. Clear, he said blasting the man and civilians with his key once more. During this scene, Soon was eyeing the boy warily as she believed it could be Minato's son. However the Genjutsu was messing with her mind and she dismissed it while thinking that Minato must have found another baby somehow. She did, however, have the marriage contract that Hana Inazuka and Naruto Namikaze were to be married when Naruto turned 16. Little did she know that the contract wouldn't be seen for nearly 12 years. Back to the meeting, the Sandame sighed at some of the more covert attempts to control the boy or to outright kill him. He decided to put Naruto in the orphanage and let him have a chance instead of being sabotaged by the various council members. He made his decree and dismissed the council before he told Jiraiya to run his spy network and keep it strong while watching for anything related to Jinchuriki. Jiraiya nodded sadly and quickly made his way out of the village. As the Hokage dropped off Naruto, the matron smiled at the boy and put him with the other orphans of the night. If she had stayed even a second longer, she would have seen the intricate seal on the babe's forearm with the kanji for six emblazoned in the middle before it disappeared. Time skip. Six years. October 10th Naruto's birthday. Sarutobi took another puff of his pipe as he looked out on the village he loved so much. And hated at the same time. The past six years had been close to a comparable hell for the young Jinchuriki. While none of the younger generation knew of the Kayubi, as per the change in his law by the damned civilian council, the older generation absolutely despised the boy and made no secret of it. Just last year the matron had kicked Naruto out of the orphanage and Sarutobi had been forced to get him a rundown apartment and an allowance from his father's estate. He tried to get the people to understand, but they were too blinded by hate. Not that he could blame them fully. He understood that Naruto represented the embodiment of the death and destruction that had occurred that day. He knew that the village needed to vent their anger. However, he knew they were going too far. They had begun to physically harm Naruto, outside of the orphanage, and the Hokage was trying to prevent it. The boy deserved a better life than the one he was given. Every time he visited Naruto, he got the same question. Why Ji-san? Naruto would ask. It broke the man's heart not to inform the boy or at least keep it from happening. However, 
All he could do was tell the boy that the villagers needed forgiveness and that Naruto shouldn't blame them or take revenge. Little did he know that the unconscious repetition of this speech would fundamentally change the way Naruto viewed the world and his outlook on life. He sighed once again as he felt Chakra Signature's approach. He turned to the Anbu team and gave them a stern glare. This year, if one person enters Naruto Uzumaki's apartment without his consent then I will personally kill you all. Understood, he asked in a deadly calm manner. The Anbu all nodded their consent before he dismissed them. This year would be the only year that Naruto did not receive a beating on his birthday. Naruto's Apartment 8 p.m. Naruto sat in his apartment all alone. He stared at the small cupcake that he had been able to purchase, at an outrageous price of course, with the single candle atop it. He quietly sung, Happy Birthday, to himself whilst the Anbu ignored him from the outside. None of them cared about him, they simply had to guard him. He sniffled and then started to cry softly after he blew out the candle. The entire village hated him and he didn't know what he had done to earn their hate. In the orphanage, he had always been hidden away when adults had come to adopt a child, always being told that, a demon doesn't deserve parents. He had cried initially but he eventually grew used to the degrading remarks. He hid behind a mask of happiness, always smiling, always laughing, over the slightest thing. He knew it was but a defense against the village, but what else could he do? Ever since he had been thrown out by the matron of the orphanage, he had lived on the streets for a month before one of the masked men found him and his, Ji-san, as Naruto knew him, gave him this apartment. It was run down with only a small living room with a kitchen and bedroom attached with a bathroom inside the bedroom. He knew it wasn't much, but he was happy to know that his Ji-san cared enough to get him a place to live. He could only afford to buy ramen packets or, on rare occasions, to eat at Ichiraku's ramen bar. It was the only place in town that he could enter without being glared at, overpriced, or thrown out of. He smiled remembering the lunch the two ramen stand owners had given him and silently sent a prayer to Kami thanking them. Little did he know that a particular Kami was paying attention and she only wished she could do more. He remembered Ji-san always telling him to, forgive the villagers, and while he didn't understand why he should, he took it to heart because it was the word of the old man who cared for him. Still, he knew the man was hiding the reason why he was hated and who his parents were. He had stopped asking simply because he knew he would not get a straight answer from the old man. Not that he didn't like the man, no he did, he just didn't trust him anymore. He finally stopped strolling down memory lane as grabbed his cupcake before slowly eating it. The only reason he ate so fast at Ichiraku's is so that he could leave and not affect their business, and so that no one can knock it away from him before he was done. In truth, Naruto liked to savor his food, not scarf it down like a ravenous dog. He sighed as he finished the cupcake and looked at the clock before heading to bed. He would be starting the academy soon and he would need his rest. He got into his room before he glanced down and noticed something on his arm. Now, luckily, the Sandame had been able to ensure that he received enough education so as to read and write at least moderately well. He noticed the kanji for six on his arm pulsing for a minute before a puff of smoke appeared and a book along with a letter addressed to, Naruto, appeared in his hands. He looked at the books before looking at the seal in time to see it pulse before settling back into his arm with a slight change. Naruto didn't know it at the time, but the seal had several, compartments, and each one was more difficult than the last, Naruto would be able to gradually unlock the next level after mastering the current level of sealing that his father had given him. Naruto looked at the book once again before shrugging and grabbing the note. Dear Naruto, I'm sorry for what has been done and that I cannot be there for you. I hope you can forgive me and that these notes and books will help you. They contain all my vast knowledge on the art of sealing. Please follow in my footsteps and I will be watching from above. Naruto sat there a little perplexed at the vague message. He shrugged his shoulders and picked up the book titled, Sealing for Dummies Volume 1. He knew only one thing as he started on the first chapter of what promised to be something both entertaining and powerfully useful. He would honor the mystery man's wish. He would follow in this man's footsteps because, even though Naruto had no idea who he was, he was placing his faith in Naruto, and Naruto had no intention of letting the man down. A ten-year-old Naruto was running, in his usual bright orange attire, 
from the Junin that was chasing him after his latest prank. He laughed loudly even as he ducked into an alleyway and the Junin ran right past him looking all around. Naruto stayed hidden for a good five minutes before he dropped his henge of a trash can and burst it out laughing again. He smiled remembering his latest prank. Several people would not allow Naruto to buy regular clothing or unspoiled food so he would prank them. His latest prank, a masterpiece, if he did say so himself, used an exploding tag set to go off from underneath the rack of clothing and turn everything into a myriad of neon orange to lime green colors. He had snuck into the store and set it up in the early morning and watched from a balcony across the street. That was how they found out that it was him who set up the prank. What no one knew was the real reasons behind these pranks was to test his abilities as a shinobi. He tested his stealth and infiltration by setting up the pranks, his intellect and observation by planning them, his speed and stamina by running from the various shinobi that would chase him afterwards. Everyone just thought they were cries for attention, which they did have that effect, but Naruto didn't do them for that. Hell he even had the Sandame fooled. Ever since he had received those books on his sixth birthday, Naruto had realized that he was somewhat of a prodigy in seals. That paint bomb seal, took him about 10 minutes to invent and keep all the bugs out of it. He had only studied seals for 4 years and yet he was an expert class according to the notes. With his prowess and ability, he would be a seals master by the time he was 12. Despite this revelation, Naruto hid it from everyone. Simply put, Naruto didn't trust anyone with the knowledge that he was actually good at something. Everything that was ever good in his life was stripped from him and destroyed. He wouldn't allow that with this. He trained in secret, at night and outside the village. He had found an old abandoned base with a desk that he could use. Apparently it had been used by some guy named, Orochimaru, but Naruto didn't care. He did care, however, when he found Oro Thames, as Naruto came to call him, Cursed Seal Notes. Naruto had only been at a journeyman level with seals when he found it but he understood the basic concept and idea of the mark. For a quick review, seals levels went from apprentice to journeyman to expert to master. Simple but effective, an apprentice could probably use seals but barely understood them. A journeyman could understand the basic seals and use most of the intermediate level seals. An expert understood everything up to intermediate level seals and could even use some, if not most, master seals. Finally, a master could do just about anything with seals, even use them in battle. The Yandaimi was a true seal master while Jiraiya was more of an upper level expert than a master. Naruto had found that he understood the cursed seal and, recently, believed he could remove the accursed thing from anyone who wanted him to. He wasn't 100% certain if he could but he was confident that, if a seal's master like maybe Jiraiya, would check his work, that it would be effective. He had figured out the catalyst. Seeing as Orochimaru had been stupid enough to leave the chemical formula for it in the notes, that changed the person's body and mind. He had devised a seal that would purge the afflicted's body and allow him to destroy the seal at the same time. It would be painful, but possible. Naruto had also come to another conclusion in his studies. He was a Jinchuriki. He had noticed the complex seal array on his stomach anytime he practiced with his uncontrollable chakra. He had taken to studying it even going so far as to make a copy and breaking it down into pieces so he could understand its function better. He had figured it out when he was eight and he knew it had to be the Kyubi sealed inside him. He had been a little scared at first but after two years he just wanted to meet the beast and understand why it had caused so much destruction when there were no historical incidents with it before. He had tried to focus on his mind to access the area that previous Jinchurikis had mentioned within Orotem's notes but any time he did so he seemed to lose his concentration and was hit with a massive headache that would leave him wondering what exactly he had been doing right before. Orochimaru seemed to have a slight curiosity about how Jinchuriki would react to his curse mark. Naruto quit laughing and stood up while thinking about lunch. He patted his belly and made his way to the only place in town that would serve him, Ichiraku Ramen. He swiftly moved through the crowd into his favorite restaurant. He walked in and sat down on his stool and smiled at Ayame. She was his sister figure and he trusted her much like he trusted the Sandame. Not for the same reasons though. Tsuki, owner of Ichiraku's and Ayame's father, and Ayame were the first people to serve him without a price inflation and even gave him a free bowl from time to time. 
He trusted them enough to let them know of his daily life, but he did not burden them with the beatings and other abuse he put up with. On the same hand, he did not inform them of his sealing ability simply because it could cause trouble for all of them if they accidentally mentioned it to the wrong people. And yes he meant accidental. He ordered his usual ten miso ramen and smiled as Ayame disappeared into the back to speak with Chuki. Today was his birthday after all. He knew he would have to hide in the forests at night and take any and all precious things from his apartment if he didn't want them destroyed like they were every year excluding his sixth birthday. It seems that the council had found a way past his yearly Anbu guards. Naruto didn't know how, nor did he care, all he knew was he had to fend for himself. Chuki came out of the back with a big smile on his old face. Well Naruto, it's good to see you again my boy. How is the academy going? He asked as he tended to the noodles now being cooked. Naruto let loose his epic grin and responded loudly, it's great. We learned Kawerimi yesterday. I can't wait to graduate. He wouldn't tell Chuki that the whole loud mouthed idiot mask was to make the teachers believe that they didn't have to sabotage him, although they still did, and so the council wouldn't block him because they would believe he'd die on any high class mission without any skills. Chuki smiled as Ayame came out of the back with enough materials for Naruto's order. That's good, I can already see you with that headband, he said as he placed the first bowl in front of Naruto. First five bowls are on me tonight kid. Happy birthday, he said. Naruto responded with his usual enthusiasm, thanks Chuki ji san He yelled as he dug in. Ayame giggled and Chuki laughed loudly but you could feel the warmth coming from Naruto. He rarely got gifts on his birthday and this was one of the best he'd ever received. The other was the very jumpsuit he wore, given to him by the Sandame, it had the same genjutsu seal woven into it as the one that used to be on his forehead. Not that Naruto knew that, he wore it out of love for the old man and because it helped with his stealth training tremendously. Naruto spent a good three hours with the Ichirakus before heading home for the night. He could already see the people who were setting up for the festival. He sorely hoped that he could avoid the annual, Fox Hunt, as it had come to be called. He had no intentions of being caught this year. He made it home within twenty minutes and gathered the few pieces of clothing, various cups of ramen and sealing supplies that he had, borrowed, from people who denied him service. He looked outside and swore, it was getting dark and he was barely leaving his apartment. He sealed all his belongings into the chakra seal that the, mysterious man, had originally placed on him and set it to release in the morning or if his chakra was fed into the seal at certain intervals. He quickly left his apartment and ran for the forest of death. Hopefully, it would save him as it had in the past. Midnight forest of death. Naruto was panting hard, he had evaded most of the mobs but had been caught by some particularly vicious Anbu. He sighed as he felt them pass overhead. Maybe he could get away after all. Well well, what do we have here? An Anbu with a ox mask said. A maybe not. Naruto thought as he silently cursed his luck. Seems like we got a little fox here. What do ya say we make a show out of it? His partner in the snake mask replied. Naruto got up and started to run but didn't get very far before he was yanked back and tied up by the man with the ox mask. Now now, we just want to let the villagers have their annual fun with the village demon. You wouldn't want to ruin that huh? He said. Naruto scowled and spit on the man's mask, go yourself you oxer. Naruto yelled. Ox didn't take too kindly to that and backhanded Naruto forcing him to grit his teeth in pain. Ox pulled Naruto roughly to his feet. Don't worry. There's plenty more where that came from. Ox said as his friend chuckled. Ox picked up Naruto and bounded away into the trees with Naruto raining obscenities all the way. Soon enough, Naruto found himself in the most hated place he could be, in front of a mob on his birthday in an alleyway secluded from the village proper. Naruto chuckled grimly in his mind but decided if he was going to be hurt, at least he'd make it worthless for them. The Anbu took money from the crowd to let them throw stones at Naruto. Naruto simply stood there and didn't even try to move, his famous foxy smile on full blast and it unnerved several of the mobsters. Unfortunately, it pissed more of them off and they started throwing stones without paying. They yelled obscenities and things like, this is for my sister, or the ever classic, die demon. Some started to throw bottles and as the first one shattered on his head, all hell broke loose. 
They soon began to close in and beat him with sticks and pieces of pipe, luckily no one had a real weapon. That didn't mean he wasn't damaged however. Broken bones, crushed organs, it was amazing he was still alive and conscious. Little did the villagers know that, after all the years of abuse and pressure, a seal made itself known on the back of Naruto's head and glowed white before shattering and allowing the boy to fall into the sweet bliss of unconsciousness. The last thing Naruto saw was the Hokage descending into the mob like a vengeful angel. Mindscape. Same time, Naruto opened his eyes to notice that he felt no pain. He thought that was odd until he saw that there were pipes running along the wall of what seemed to be a sewer. He frowned and thought, so they threw me in the sewer. I thought I saw Oji-san coming to rescue me, he thought for a few more seconds before dismissing it as an illusion. His thought process came to a halt as he heard a soft, boom. Echo throughout the sewer. He frowned when he heard it again and again. It was like someone was throwing themselves against a wall or something like that. Curious, like most boys, he made his way towards the sound. As it got louder, he could tell it must have come from something far stronger and far larger than himself to make this much noise. He noticed a red glow coming from ahead and the sounds of crying and someone yelling gibberish. He could tell they were pissed but he couldn't tell at what. He noticed the light intensify and he stepped into a large room and looked to his right only for him to freeze at the sight. A large red fox with burning red eyes was slamming itself into cage bars as large as the Hokage monument themselves. That wasn't what stopped him however, this fox had nine tails and Naruto had just figured out that he was now in his mindscape. It took all of five seconds for him to process this and to listen to the ranting demon. The Kyubi continued to throw itself into the bars while crying. Its eyes burned with a fierce hatred and Naruto could make sense of its words now that he was close enough. Let me out, the kid needs me, I will tear those humans to pieces. It yelled as it threw its weight against the seal once again. Naruto's eyes widened and then narrowed, why does it want to help me? He thought, please, please, let me help him, please. Kayubi said its voice getting softer as its body collapsed heaving from the effort of trying to help its container. Naruto was shocked to say the least. No one had ever just helped him before, he had been the first customer of Ayame and Chuki. Yet, here was a being, called a demon of all things, wanting to help him. Slowly, he made his way forward into the fox who was still oblivious to its company. He looked at the gates for only a second before entering them and walking up to the being who wanted to help him. He sat down and grabbed one of the tails that had fallen still. Gently, he stroked its crimson fur, admiring the quality and sheer feel of it. Soft, almost like velvet, Naruto thought with a soft smile. Kayubi's head shot up as a guess I can say it now huh? Her container stroked one of the vixen's tails. She turned its head and was shocked to see the boy, no man that was stroking her tail without a fear or care in the world. No being had ever gotten close enough to Kayubi without her permission before. Kayubi's eyes softened and lost the crimson glow as they turned into a deep shade of cerulean blue, ya yeah, I changed the color. Big whoop. Wanna fight about it? Kayubi smiled brightly and spoke to the boy, it would seem that my container is either bravely foolish or foolishly brave. She said softly, her voice becoming more feminine without her rage fueling it. Naruto appeared unfazed as he continued to stroke her tail. Either is fine with me Kayubi-san. However, I would like to know if what you said earlier is true. He said as his gaze turned and captured her own, all without stopping his actions with her tail. Kayubi's breathe hitched as she stared into his eyes. Those eyes were far too old for a ten-year-old. Her gaze softened once again. Every word, Naruto-kun. She replied. Naruto stared for a moment before stopping his hand and earning a groan of disappointment from the vixen. He smirked at her and she blushed although he couldn't see it. Well well, it seems the fabled Kayubi has a weak spot for her tails. He said as he stroked her tail once again getting a low rumbling purr from the demoness. Kayubi gathered her thoughts and smirked, so you figured out I am a female and have not made some stupid east remark. I'm liking you more and more kit. She replied as she curled up to put her snout directly in front of him. Naruto chuckled, women are more important than men. Without women, we would not exist for it is the woman that bears and raises a child. The man only aids in the process. Although, 
Some men do take their responsibilities more serious than others and some women forsake their duty, but we are not here to discuss which gender is better. He said with a smirk at his resident. Kayubi chuckled, indeed Kit, I wish to offer you something. If you accept, I will be most happy for you. If not, then nothing is lost on my end. She replied as she got serious. Naruto looked at her for a moment before nodding and said, very well, but what do you expect in return for this offer? Kayubi was taken aback by that statement and replied, Kit, nothing. I have been awake for a week and, while I have not seen everything you have been through, why would you be so distrusting? Kayubi could sense feelings coming from her container but she could not look into his memories. Naruto was silent for a moment before replying, No one has ever just given me something Kayubi-san. Even Oji-san made me promise certain things when he gave me my own apartment. My birthday gifts are out of pity not because they simply want to give me something. His voice was almost devoid of emotion as he spoke. It was obvious he did not believe anyone loved him. Kayubi frowned. She may have been an immortal demoness but no one deserved to be unloved, unless they chose it of course. Kayubi nodded and said, Very well. My offer still stands. I wish to help train you. I will teach you what I know of chakra control and what few jutsus I do know including Shunshin and a few useful ones like Cage Bunshin. In return, I want nothing except your happiness. It is that simple, take it or leave it Naruto-kun. As a note, my name is actually Hikari. She dearly hoped he would take the offer. She wanted to see more of his life and help him. In just a week, she had seen the hatred he had taken and having no one to love him was not something she would allow. She could see how kind he was to animals and the people who were at least neutral towards him. Naruto looked at her for a moment before nodding. She was about to speak when he spoke the words she thought she'd never hear, would you like to leave this cage? He asked. Hikari blinked and stared at Naruto. Wh what? She replied. Naruto continued to stare and responded, I said, would you like to leave this cage? I did not believe I would need to repeat myself. Hikari was stunned. He would let her out. Why would he do that? Naruto, that's she couldn't answer, she knew the seal was strong, there was no way he could release her without destroying himself in the process. Naruto smiled softly, a true smile. You were the first person to offer me something that I did not ask for. You were my friend and, even if you were not, I cannot stand to see a girl cry nor to see someone behind bars when it is obvious they do not belong there. He replied sincerely. Hikari smiled and her body glowed until Naruto found himself staring at, what he would call, a goddess. She was about 5 feet 8 inches with crimson red hair, two red fox ears with black tips, and those beautiful blue eyes. Her skin was a healthy tan color and she had three whisker marks just like Naruto. She had DD cup breasts and a slim waist that showed off her shapely rear and well-toned legs. She was wearing a beautiful red kimono and her nine tails were splayed out behind her, red with black tips. Naruto gawked for a second before he heard Hikari giggling and he moved his stare into her eyes. He refused to be a pervert. She smiled at him, like what you see. She asked as she gave a twirl to show off her form. Naruto simply nodded dumbly. She giggled again and Naruto found the sound to be like soft bells in the wind. You were saying, about getting out of the seal. She asked, Hikari's voice will be normal in her human form. Naruto nodded, I studied the seal extensively. It won't allow you to leave with your power without killing me, but that doesn't mean you can't leave and then have me provide the power to Yune. He asked with a smirk. Hikari stared for a second before looking down. You haven't even asked me why I attacked or anything. You haven't blamed me for all those people dying. Why are you being so kind? She asked. Naruto grew serious. I searched for a year for any mention of you being hostile in the past and found absolutely nothing. There was no reason for you to attack Konoha so I figure someone must have tricked you or controlled you. I hope it's the first because I do not want to face someone who can control you, he replied. Hikari smiled and hugged Naruto before whispering a, thank you, into his ear. She pushed him back and grew serious. Naruto, I was tricked by a man known as Orochimaru into attacking the village. Unfortunately, he is not what he appears to be. Seeing the confused look, she continued to explain. Some years ago the celestial beings, 
along with the Biju combated a vicious creature known as the Yamada no Orochi. We eventually succeeded in sealing away his power but it seems that he has returned and is determined to achieve immortality once again and wage war amongst the heavens. He was able to catch me asleep and used a powerful genjustu to cause me to fly into an uncontrollable rampage. I am sorry Naruto, she said. Naruto simply nodded at the story. That explains that, he said. Now, to get out of the seal, I'm going to need your consent to separate your body and your power for a time. You can come and go inside the seal once this is complete but, as I understand the seal, you cannot die so long as even 1% of your chakra is inside me. You will return when your chakra runs out and you will have to stay in the seal until it recharges. Luckily, your body will have enough so you could stay out indefinitely if you used only everyday chakra, he explained. Hikari nodded. Listen, Naruto, I wanted to ask your permission to see your memories. While I could just do it, I feel it would violate your privacy and I don't want to do that. She said. Naruto raised an eyebrow but smiled and said, Thank you for asking Hikari-chan but why would you want to see my memories? Most of them are not pleasant. His voice became sad and lonely at the end of that sentence. Hikari frowned and said, I want to get to know you a little better. Besides that though, I was thinking about making a contract with you and I was hoping to see something in your memories that would help me cater the contract to you. Naruto's eyes widened but he was curious, this, contract, what is it? He asked. Hikari looked at him and replied, basically, it's an agreement between the two of us that I grant you a specific power and you do something for me in return. It's actually how most bloodlines were created. Oh and it would also serve to give you control so I could get out of this seal. She replied. Naruto's eyes took on a devious glint that sent a shiver down Hikari's spine. It reminded her of herself when she was thinking of something fun. So you could give me a bloodline? He asked. Hikari nodded, if that's what you want, she said. Naruto thought for a second and slowly added up the pros and cons. Finally, he nodded to Hikari, very well. I'll allow you to look, but please be careful. I'd rather not have to relive something because you get curious, he replied. Hikari smiled brightly. This was a major sign of trust and she was hoping to get that. Apparently being inside him at birth had helped somewhat. Okay, you won't have to relive anything. I'll just go through it now that you gave me the go ahead. She replied and closed her eyes before a tendril of red chakra went down the hallway and into a door. For almost two hours, Hikari watched everything Naruto went through and was horrified. She couldn't explain how much damage these villagers had done and she wanted to tear several limb from limb. When all was said and done, she collapsed and cried into Naruto's chest, who simply held her and whispered to help her deal with it. She finally stopped crying and looked at Naruto. I believe it's time for that contract Naruto. She said with puffy eyes and a smile on her face. You mean it, Naruto said, acting a bit like his goofy self at the prospect of a bloodline. Hikari nodded her head, definitely, I even have an idea for a bloodline if you want, she replied. Naruto nodded his head as he hadn't thought of anything particularly viable. Since you get attacked so much, how about a defensive bloodline to help you not get hurt? She suggested. Naruto ed his head to the side as they sat on the floor Indian style. Yeah but how? I mean it's a great idea but just how do we stop things from hurting me? He asked. Hikari put her finger to her chin in a thinking position and thought for a moment before snapping her fingers. I got it, she said. We will allow you to change your skin into an adamantium-like armor. I'll even make it resistant to jutsus to a certain extent. The only downside is that lightning jutsu would be extremely effective against you when your bloodline is active, she explained. Naruto thought for a few seconds before his grin grew to epic proportions. Great idea Hikari-chan, he said enthusiastically, missing the blush that came to Hikari's face. Hey, when you see all of someone's life before your eyes, wouldn't you get a little attached too? Besides her mind was already thinking of things she could clear throat, take care of, to make sure he's something every woman would want. She came back to the real world just as Naruto asked, so what would you want in return for this Hikari-chan? I know you can't just give it to me. Hikari chuckled and sauntered over to Naruto who suddenly had a very bad feeling about what she would want. What I want, Naruto-kun, is very simple. You see, 
finding a mate is a very tricky ordeal because I am very picky. Also, I can't mark you as my eternal mate because my power is inside you so I don't have the strength to do so. Naruto's feeling got even worse as she was now face to face with him and breathing hotly onto him. My want, Naruto, is for you to make me your lover when you come of age, in other words, be my mate. She said with a bit of in her voice at the end to accentuate her point. Naruto gulped as he felt her body be pressed against his and her lips softly caressing his own. He slowly relaxed and enjoyed the only to feel her break off and look at him smirking. Naruto nodded in consent and said, fine fine. It's a deal Hikari-chan. Don't know why you'd want me though. He spoke softly at the end. Hikari just giggled and said, by the time I'm done with you, you won't be asking that question again. She said with a slightly perverse smile that Naruto didn't know whether to be happy about or be scared of. Now, let's get to work. A. N. Get used to the perverted girls because it's going to be a theme, Q perverse giggle from Hikari. Time skip. Two days. Sarutobi Hiruzen was having a horrible two days. First, his paperwork was so bad that he couldn't visit Naruto on his birthday. Then, he finds out that a mob has somehow caught Naruto outside his apartment on his birthday. Finally, he arrives on scene only to see his surrogate grandson being beaten to death and when he takes him to the hospital, he had to threaten people to heal him. That was only day one. Today, he spent three hours in the council room with the idiotic Sibylian council and the apathetic clan heads, as they ranted and raved about how the demon had done some damage or other when Sarutobi knew it was a load of bullshit. When he finally dismissed them, it was noon and his paperwork had built up. He had been so tempted to burn it all. Instead, he had brought it with him as he had gone to the hospital to visit Naruto and, hopefully, apologize for the attack once again. He had watched for years as the village took its hate out on Naruto and had tried to help Naruto cope with it. He had been somewhat helpful but he still didn't think that Naruto fully trusted him. He didn't know why, just call it a gut feeling. He had arrived at the hospital and proceeded to Naruto's room. He entered only to see him still asleep and hooked up to the various machines. He spent most of his afternoon there and surprisingly felt several small chakra pulses from Naruto. Before he could have it investigated by the doctors, however, Naruto stirred and began to wake up. This prompted Sarutobi's full attention because he didn't know if Naruto had met the fox. He had never been unconscious for more than a few hours so it was logical to assume that something kept Naruto from awakening. He stared as Naruto's eyes opened and smiled when Naruto yelled out with his usual enthusiasm. Hey Oji-san, Naruto yelled. Sarutobi chuckled before he reapsended, this is a hospital Naruto-kun. Please keep it down, but it is good to see you again. Although I wish it were under better circumstances, the Hokage said. Naruto chuckled and apologized. Sarutobi grew serious and said, I'm sorry once again Naruto-kun. You should not have to wake in this hospital and yet, he never got to finish as he felt Naruto's glare. I love you Oji-san, but if you give me one more speech about, forgiving the villagers ignorance, then I'm gonna take your pipe and shove it down your throat. Naruto said in a half serious half playful manner. To say Sarutobi was shocked would be an understatement. He was absolutely flabbergasted, Naruto would never threaten him. Just as he was about to accuse the imposter or look for some genjutsu or prank, Naruto spoke again. I don't have the villagers Oji-san. I'm simply tired of hearing the same thing every time I'm in the hospital. I know they hate me for something but I just can't understand what it could be. Naruto said his head going down in sorrow. Sarutobi looked sorrowfully at the boy. It was definitely Naruto to not hate the villagers so it had to be him. Besides he could feel the Kyubi's chakra that lingered after healing the boy now that he focused on it. He considered telling the boy his burden here and now, like he had every time Naruto was in the hospital, but mentally shook it away and simply hugged the boy instead. Mentally, Naruto and Hikari were laughing up a storm. Literally, there was a storm in Naruto's mind of mouths just laughing. Kid you could start your own acting company. I can't believe the old man is falling for this. She told him. I know, Kami no shinobi my ass. He can't even see through a ten-year-old's bullshit. Naruto thought back as he hugged his grandfather. Honestly, Naruto didn't want to lie to the old man but if the Hokage was keeping secrets, then why shouldn't he? 
After all, he knew there was no way Sarutobi would let him have continued access to Hikari. The safety of the village, and all that jazz. Nay Oji-san, could I get out of here? Naruto asked as Sarutobi pulled away. Sarutobi smiled softly and picked up his chart. After a few moments to make sure everything was in order, he nodded to Naruto. Sure Naruto-kun, I can sign you out because it looks like you healed up just fine. He said. Naruto, still being a kid and in his mask, jumped up and rushed to put on his jumpsuit before dragging his Oji-san out of the room so they could go get some ramen. They quickly checked out of the hospital and headed to Ichiraku's for some dinner. Naruto kept up his mask and was able to throw off Sarutobi from remembering about the chakra pulses in the hospital room. Sarutobi smiled at Naruto and got up to go home as the Ichirakus closed the shop for the night. It was getting late and he had to get home. Naruto bid him a farewell and watched as he disappeared down the street. Naruto smirked before heading to his hidden lab to check and make sure no one had found his hideaway or his notes on ceiling. Naruto's Hidden Lab 10.15 p.m. Naruto entered and smirked as he saw all his notes still in the position he left them. He began to look through his notes until he came across the seal he designed for removing a cursed seal. He wanted to make sure that it would work theoretically before he even tried to make it into a practical application. He believed he had enough information to remove the seal but he still had a nagging feeling that he should take a look at an active seal before he tried applying his seal. There may have been changes from the notes or it may have reacted badly to the host's body and attempted to destroy its chakra coils or something along those lines. He sighed and set them aside, they were useless for now. He picked up a seal he had specially designed to make him faster and stronger than just using weights or a gravity seal. A resistance seal. It, basically, increased the force against every little movement he made. He had to be careful, however, because he could break his bones if he put it too high, or he could develop muscles that have nothing to do with fighting and cause them to limit his mobility during combat. He had found his way around that by adding in limiter seals so that the resistance was only on the muscles he wanted. He had studied anatomy just for the muscles and, while he was no medic nin, he could properly locate and describe the different functions of bones and muscles in his body. He doubted that the information would be used often, but better to be prepared than caught unawares. He smiled in contentment as he picked up a special ink container that had ink laced with his blood and chakra on it before he started to draw the seal on his chest. Thirty minutes later, and much rechecking of the seal, Naruto was ready to activate it. He sent a small amount of chakra into his seal and immediately felt his muscles begin contracting to work against the resistance. He smiled brightly and yelled in excitement as he declared the seal a success. Congratulations Naruto-kun. I am rather surprised at how good you were with seals. Hikari said in his mind. Thanks Hikari-chan. Naruto replied. I am glad it worked but I still want to find a way to remove the curse seal and maybe find a way to incorporate seals into my battle style. Naruto added. Hikari nodded mentally in his head. I may not be a seals master but I could probably help with organizing and challenging your ideas Naruto-kun. She offered. Naruto beamed with happiness. Thanks again Hikari-chan. I would appreciate that. I never had anybody just offer to be my idea board. He said mentally. Hikari smiled in his mind. Get used to it now that I'm here. I won't leave you and I won't betray you my mate. She said adding a little with the mate word. Naruto shivered and blushed in response. He wasn't old enough to have perverted thoughts yet but that didn't mean that Hikari was going to wait. She had already explained what being a mate entailed and said that she would be enhancing a few of his features to make it more enjoyable for her. Naruto had actually given permission for it so long as she didn't change his ideas or his obvious looks. Not that she was going to do that anyways. He had no objections to it because it meant that he would have a family sometime later in his life and, secretly, that was one of his goals. Besides, who wouldn't want to be married, by demon standards, to a goddess like Hikari? Naruto didn't want to find the man that didn't. In any case, Naruto smiled warmly and replied, Thank. I seem to be thanking you a lot. What do ya say we just skip that and start brainstorming ya? Hikari laughed. Very well. Actually, I may have a solution to your, seals in battle, idea. She said, noticing she had his attention she continued, My chakra ability, that every biju has mind you, 
is to literally make my chakra solid, usually into a cloak around my person. Now, you, by extension of me, now have that ability, but I doubt that you could form the cloak or anything small without enormous training in control and capacity. She noticed his disappointment but continued in favor of making him happy. I do believe that you could trace a seal in the air using your chakra before touching it and activating its effects by making the seal into reality by using your chakra. You would have to train to focus your chakra to your finger but that is far easier than controlling all your chakra and trying to force it into something small. She explained. As she finished she could feel his happiness and giddiness at the idea that he could simply draw seals in midair. Naruto was grinning from ear to ear as he sent a mental hug to his mate. All right. I can't wait to see if that works. Naruto replied enthusiastically. He looked at the clock and noticed it was midnight. He frowned as he knew the training would have to wait. He needed to leave now if he didn't want to catch the last call round of drunks. After a quick use of seals and putting away all of his material, he promptly disappeared into the forest surrounding the entrance that was hiding in a bush. Konoha Streets, 12.30 a.m. Naruto was stealthily making his way home to sleep off the excitement when he heard a loud noise in the nearby alleyway. He was tempted to ignore it and continue on his way, passing it off as nothing but a regular everyday cat or something, however, he heard a scream and he froze. That was a female scream and it wasn't the good kind. He sighed to himself and thought, I can't let a woman get raped or something, I'd be worse than the villagers. Hikari-chan think you could help me out if I get into trouble? He asked the fox queen. Definitely Naruto-kun, let's see what's going on. She replied as she brought up a screen inside her cage to see through his eyes. Naruto smiled at Hikari's helpfulness and scaled the nearby building, only one story tall, and looked down on the alleyway. Alleyway. Anko Mitarashi was not having a good day. She woke up and got dressed rather quickly but things went downhill from there. The esteemed council had denied her advancement to full Junin once again with the only blemish on her record as the time away from Konoha when she had been, marked, by Orochimaru. After spending all morning trying to get them to change the bigots, she had gone to lunch only to find that her favorite dango stand had run out of dango and red bean soup, her favorite meal. After lunch, she was scheduled to do an interrogation except that the man had, apparently, escaped from the custody of the Anbu. So, she had spent most of her afternoon tracking down the bastard and interrogating him. She had ended up with a new scar on her left arm and a sprained ankle for her troubles. It had been 9 p.m. by the time she was done and she still hadn't eaten dinner. After her report, she had promptly run to the nearest bar and ordered some dango and sake. That was where everything went straight into the gutter and kept going until it reached the deepest pits of the sewer. She hadn't been paying attention to her alcohol consumption and was thoroughly drunk. Unfortunately, several of the men who believed she was nothing more than Orochimaru's slut, spy had found her and proceeded to secretly buy her drinks and one of them had apparently slipped her a drug that would leave her very sober but completely disoriented. That is what led her to right now. She was surrounded by six men, all civilians although one was a poison maker that had made the drug. She was down to nothing but her panties and they were preparing to rip them off when she had done something she had swore to never do, scream like a woman. She hated being weak and this was the first time she was this close to being actually raped. Orochimaru hadn't touched her because, she believed, he liked little boys. Sure, people had tried before but she had always kicked their asses. She wasn't Konoha's snake mistress for nothing after all. They slammed her head into the pavement making her vision swim and she knew she'd probably black out soon enough. She cried at the thought that she'd lose her virginity to some jerks that were just trying to get their rocks off. The men just laughed harder as they ripped her panties off and forced her to sit up and look down at her form. Don't cry, you're going to enjoy this you snake whore. The man who had dropped his pants said as the other men were still laughing. He began to kneel down. Up on the roof this was the scene that Naruto came upon. And it made his blood boil. He hated seeing anyone being taken advantage of but to top it off with it being a crying woman, that was the line for Naruto. Hikari-chan can you get me enough key to make these men shit their pants and never come near her again? Naruto asked, knowing that was his only option right now as he had no sealing materials on him, not that he had the time to make the seals. 
Naruto heard a bestial growl come from the seal and smiled, of course I can. Show these men what happens when they try to take what is not theirs. Hikari said angrily. She agreed wholeheartedly with Naruto's sentiments. Men should not try to force themselves on unwilling women, and the ones that did were too weak to claim a real woman. Naruto noticed the man getting closer and focused all his ki on that one whilst Hikari helped to guide her own against the others. Needless to say, the effect was instantaneous. The men stopped and started to shiver and Naruto smelt several disgusting smells as the men did exactly what he wanted, shit themselves. Naruto felt Hikari put some of her chakra into his body and smirked at the looks on the men's faces as they came to face what they believed to be a demon. You may want to leave while I'm still in a good mood, otherwise, Naruto flexed his claws, I may not be so kind when I get down there. He said. The men looked at one another before they all scattered, too scared to think that he was just a ten-year-old boy. Naruto jumped down into the alleyway and felt the demonic chakra recede. Luckily, Hikari had kept the output so low that no one had noticed it. He looked at the woman before quickly gathering the fishnet shirt, shingords, skirt, and trench coat and put it in her lap. He saw her look up at him before her eyes rolled into the back of her head and noticed the bump forming on the back. He panicked until he heard Hikari's voice, put your hand on her head Naruto-kun. He did so and watched as a small amount of red chakra healed the wound. She will be out until morning so you're safe but you may want to check her shoulder. I believe it holds something of interest to you, Hikari said. Naruto was curious so he did as Hikari asked and his breath hitched in his throat. There, on her shoulder, was an active curse seal. Naruto frowned, while inwardly he was happy to have found an active curse seal, he was very angry at the way on which he had found it. He sighed and tried to pick her up only to fail. He felt Hikari pump her chakra into his arms and legs. He mentally thanked her and picked up the woman. He didn't know her name nor where she lived so he resolved himself to take her to the lab so he could study the seal before she awoke. He struggled for a moment before hurrying towards the lab. Luckily, it took him only five minutes to get to the lab with Hikari's help. He set the woman down on the food and he kept here before covering her body up to her neck. He put her gear next to the bed and took a minute before sighing. Looks like I'm not getting any sleep tonight. Let's get to work Hikari, Naruto said gaining a mental nod from the fox demoness. Anko slowly awoke. The first thing she noticed was that she was both covered with a sheet and she was. Her headache, which should have been prevalent, was nowhere to be found and she didn't know where her clothes were. She slowly opened her eyes while preparing her body in case she needed to fight off some pervert or rapist. What she saw, however, she was not expecting. She opened her eyes and looked to her right only to see her clothes and equipment. She looked around and noticed she seemed to be in an underground bunker of some sort. She scanned the room, taking in the mostly empty space, except for a few filing cabinets and a door that seemed to lead into a hallway. She kept going around until she came upon the desk that was littered with different papers. She couldn't read them from here, but she could see a few hanging off the edge. She silently got up and got dressed with all her gear. She didn't remember coming here but everything was hazy from the time she took her first drink till now. She quietly made her way to the door until she heard another door slam in the distance. Her heart raced and she tried to figure out what to do. Finally, her instincts kicked in and she quickly used her chakra to hang onto the ceiling directly over the door and wait for whoever it was to come into the room and interrogate them. Naruto had just finished making three bowls of instant ramen and was bringing them back to a, hopefully, awake woman and feed her something. He knew ramen wasn't particularly good but it was all he had. He was balancing the ramen and two glasses of tea on a tray when he walked into his study only to find that the woman was nowhere in sight. Hikari was asleep right now and he quickly grew concerned so he headed over to the desk and set the food and drink down. He immediately started to walk back towards the door when he was tackled by a purple blur. When Naruto walked in, Anko was shocked to see a ten-year-old boy tending to her and in a bunker no less. Still, she was wary until he turned around. She immediately suffered a flashback and everything that the men had done to her returned full force. The last thing she remembered before blacking out was a blonde-headed boy trying to pick her up after putting her gear into her lap. After freezing for a moment, and thinking for one more, she quickly decided on a course of action and sprang. 
Naruto rolled with the purple blur until he found himself being pressed into the futon by the very woman he was about to go look for. He stared up at her until he found a kunai at his throat. Immediately, his demeanor changed and he glared at her with as much key and unrestrained hate as he could muster, which was a very large amount considering what he put up with daily in Konoha. Anko was shivering. If she hadn't faced Orochimaru's key, she would have been knocked out by this kid's key. A kid, not even out of the academy, could produce enough key to rival a Sanin. That was damn impressive and it caused Anko to rethink her plan. She had originally intended to interrogate the kid on what he was doing but now she was impressed and a bit curious as to just why this kid could produce so much ki. She took a closer look and gasped, she had the Kayubi Gaki. Oh this was so not good, the Sandame would kill her if she hurt him. Naruto cleared his throat gaining Anko's attention. You know, this is an awful way to treat someone who saved you from being raped. He said coldly. Anko chuckled nervously. I know that, but why did you save me? She asked genuinely curious as she removed the kunai from his throat, although she didn't let him up. Naruto looked at her curiously. Do I need a reason to rescue a beautiful woman from being taken advantage of? He asked seriously, his cold edge slightly abated with the kunai gone. Anko blushed, in both embarrassment and from the compliment, as she remembered that he had saved her and hadn't done anything to her while she was knocked out. Sorry I'm just not used to people helping me. Normally, no one would care so I was curious as to why you would. She said as she let him get up. Naruto stood up and stared at her for a moment before extending his hand. Naruto Uzumaki, and considering my reputation you should know the answer to your question. He said. Anko smirked and grabbed his hand. Anko Midarashi, why in single snake mistress of Konoha at your service? She replied. Naruto shook her hand and let it go. So I'm assuming you knew Orochimaru before his betrayal and that's why those men called you a snake whore. He asked bluntly. Anko winced but hid it behind her mask and smiled brightly before saying, Nah, you do one guy in his office and word gets around even when you threaten him and his friend to remove their unmentionables. She replied with her usual gusto. Naruto frowned as Hikari woke up in his mind. She is hiding her pain just like you Naruto-kun. Perhaps you should help her with it. Naruto sent a mental shake of his head, I'd have to remove that seal and, after studying it, I need to add a few things to remove and destroy the piece of Oro Tem's soul otherwise she'll die as it is now. Hikari sent a mental nod back as Naruto decided to continue to be frank with Anko. Anko-san, I have done you the courtesy of not hiding behind my mask. May I please ask you to do the same? He said. Anko opened her mouth to respond with her mask on until she looked into Naruto's eyes. Her words died in her throat as she looked upon the same eyes that had shocked Hikari just days ago. So cold and alone, just like mine, Anko thought as her mask slowly crumbled before Naruto's eyes. Fine Gaki, yes that's why they called me a snake whore and that's why nobody ever helps me. Only my friends Kurenai Chan, Hana Chan, Yugao Chan, and the Hokage believe me to be loyal to Konoha and only the old man has broken my mask. She replied, she didn't know fully why she felt compelled to confide in him, but she did know she felt like she could trust him with her life. Naruto smiled softly, thank you Anko-san, I don't know why but I feel like we outcasts should stick together nay. He said. Anko chuckled, indeed we should kid, so tell me, where are we anyways? She asked. Naruto frowned. We are in an underground bunker I found and used to study my passion. I don't trust the villagers to not destroy the only thing I'm good at or that I take an interest in. He replied. He quietly walked over to his desk and picked up the notes on the cursed seal before sealing them away into his arm. Anko looked at him curiously, and that would be. She asked. Naruto looked at her sizing her up. Tell her Naruto-kun, it may help you to win her full trust if you show her some of your own. With a mental nod, Naruto spoke, promise not to reveal where this is and what I'm working on to anyone. Even the Hokage, he asked. Anko was, once again, surprised by the boy. He really was secretive, still she could defend herself, he can't. She nodded, I promise on pain of death not to reveal it. She replied. Naruto nodded in appreciation, sealing, he replied. Anko raised an eyebrow, sealing is a difficult art. 
Not many shinobi find it useful and most discredit it unless you're an acclaimed sealmaster like the Yandaimi or Jiraiya of the Sani. She said. Naruto nodded again, exactly why I like it so much. No one knows what sealing is capable of and very few, if any, shinobi have a defense against it. Besides that, I seem to have a knack for it. You know those people who have been getting cranked for a while now? He asked. After getting a confused nod from Anko he explained, they're all people who treat me like shit so I usually just develop a weird seal to screw with their business. One of the shop owners who refused to sell me Kanai, I made a seal that converts some of the chakra in the air into electricity so anyone who entered his store and tried to pick up his metal equipment got a light shock for about a week. Naruto said. Anko's mouth was hanging off her jaw. Gee Gaki that's incredible, do you have any idea how much someone would pay to have a seal like that in their vaults? She said. Naruto thought for a second before shrugging, never thought about it honestly, but you do raise a good point. Maybe I should find someone to sell my seals so I can get out of that rat hole everyone calls my apartment. Naruto thought out loud. Anko looked at him sternly, what do you mean rat hole? She asked a little annoyed. Abuse on the streets was one thing but she believed that everyone's home should be their safe area. Naruto shrugged. I've always lived there ever since I was kicked out of the orphanage when I was four, he replied dodging the question. Anko wanted to glare at him but sighed instead. Fine fine, you don't have to answer me. She eyed him up and down before speaking again. You're in the academy aren't you? She asked. Naruto nodded, yes but I am being sabotaged even with my mask of stupidity. I can't control my chakra as it is and no one will teach me the proper taijutsu style. You know it'd be easier to tell you the things they do teach me which is pretty much the lectures on history and stuff. The practical I am usually thrown out of. He replied. Anko's blood was boiling. How dare they sabotage such an untapped resource. She thought. Just from this meeting alone, she could tell Naruto had immense potential and she refused to let it go to waste on the bigots of the academy. They may be able to sabotage you but that doesn't mean I can't help you. She said smirking at the thought of training this diamond in the rough. Naruto smiled softly at his new friend, in his mind. You'd really do that? He asked. Anko nodded furiously. Hell yes. Jeez kid, from your key and sealing abilities alone you'd make a great shinobi. Ninjutsu isn't really applicable until Junin level. Genjutsu is more for those specialized in it. Taijutsu. Well that's needed at every level so that's what we will work on first. Chakra control will have to wait until I deem you at an acceptable taijutsu level, she replied. Naruto's smile threatened to split his face. That's fine. Thank you Anko-chan. Oh can we keep this from the old man? I want to surprise him when I pass the exams, he said. In his mind, Naruto made a solemn vow to complete his curse seal removal soon so he could help his new teacher and friend. Anko thought about his request for a second before nodding. Very well. However, I expect you to pass those exams with flying colors you understand me. She said with a serious tone but a smile on her face. Naruto nodded. Hi. He responded happy that someone else was taking an interest in him. It seems that this was a good week for him. In his mind, Hikari was smirking up a storm and giggling perversely, hopefully she becomes another one of Naruto-kun's lovers. She looks like she'd love to tease him mercilessly. Hehehehehe I'm gonna have so much fun. Hikari thought. Time skip. One month. Anko was smiling broadly as she stepped into her dango stand to meet the girls. The girls hadn't been able to get together for the month after her near rape. As a matter of fact, they didn't even know about it, now that she thought about it. She shrugged mentally before noticing all her friends sitting at their usual table. Kurinai was the first to notice her, as always, because she was looking for her. They had been on alternating mission schedules so they hadn't had much time to talk. Kurinai Yuahi was a black-haired, red-eyed kunoichi that wore a dress that looked like it was made of medical tape. She had a curvy figure, much like Anko's own, with lower D-cup breasts and shapely legs. She had recently made Junin and was planning on taking a team from the graduating class this year. She had made a reputation of being ice cold and earned the moniker, Ice Queen of Konoha because she never went on dates with men. Hana Inazuka was a brunette with slight red highlights and a rather feral look overall. 
She was more tame than most members of her clan but still more feral than regular. She was only 16 but she was a chunin with a solid D-cup breast size, slim hips, and a shapely rear. She wore the regular chunin vest with a forest green shirt underneath and spandex shorts that stopped mid-thigh. She was a veterinarian and she almost never went on dates. She turned down most guys because none met her standards. Yugao Azuki was another purple-haired woman who was also a kenjutsu master and an anbu. She had a perfect hourglass figure that all the girls were slightly jealous of with DD cup breasts. She had a boyfriend named Hayate Gekko who was also a kenjutsu master. She wore standard anbu pants, shirt, and sandals. She also happened to be one of the anbu that watched over Naruto and never shirked her duty. Enko quickly sat down and ordered an obscene amount of dango. She didn't drink any sake because of what nearly happened last time. Kurenai, being her best friend, noticed this and grew concerned. Enko chan are you okay? You never have dango without sake, Kurenai said. The other girls looked at the nervous Enko who replied, Uh, yeah but I just didn't want sake today. The other girls gave her a skeptical look. Come on Enko chan we all know you never have dango without your sake. What's the matter? Hannah said trying to get her friend to spill the beans. Anko looked nervous. She did not want to tell her friends that she had nearly been raped only to be saved by a boy, who she considered to be more of a man than nine tens of the village, who she was now training. Well I guess we could just tell Ibiki that you still sleep with a stuffed snake you affectionately call. Yugao never got to finish her sentence because Anko had covered her mouth before sighing. Fine, you win, she replied. She noticed the smirks on their faces before she opened her mouth again. Promise not to tell anyone, she asked. She received three nods as her answer. She sighed before she began telling the story from her point of view up until she passed out. So, I had a pretty shitty day and I decided that a drink was in order. I went to the nearby bar and proceeded to get stone-faced drunk. Unluckily for me, there were six jerks that just wanted to me so they slipped a drug into one of my drinks. Kurenai glared at her friend. You know that men are always after you, more than normal anyways. Why would you let yourself get so drunk as to not notice? She asked. Anko frowned. I was having an off day okay. Besides I don't consider all men to want us as nothing more than breeding machines, unlike you. She replied. Before Kurenai could respond, Hannah interposed herself. Look we aren't here for a philosophical debate on men. Anko chan please continue. She said, Kurenai was quiet, for now. Right where was I? Oh yeah, so they drugged me and got me outside into the alleyway. They proceeded to take off my clothes and attempt to rape me. Anko said a little too calmly for the girls. She should have been a bit more broken up over it. Still, they kept quiet because they wanted to hear what happened. I say attempt because, before they could do anything else, they all shit themselves and ran off. I swear I was never more scared and relieved than I was before I passed out. The last thing I saw was a mop of blonde hair. Next thing I know, I wake up in a hotel room completely fine with a note saying to be more careful next time. She said amending what really happened so her friends wouldn't go digging into it and found out it was Naruto-kun who saved her. So nothing bad really happened and you're still. Hannah said curiously. Nothing bad, Kurenai said a little louder than she meant to. She was almost raped and she was you ally assaulted. This is why men are absolute pigs. Kurenai said with disgust. Yugao rolled her eyes. Give it a rest will you? Not all men are pigs. Most, but not all. Besides, Anko came out of it fine and there was the person who saved her. She replied. Kurenai glared at Yugao. 99% of men are pigs and you know it. I bet the person who saved Anko Chan was a woman who couldn't stand to see the rape. She replied. Hannah sighed again. Not this again please. Let's talk about something else. Has anyone seen anything funny lately? She asked desperately trying to change the subject. Enko chuckled. Well I saw an orange clothed gaki turn a fruit stand into a fruit salad if that counts as funny. She said. What could she say? She was proud of the gaki. He had taken to her training like a fish to water, scratch that like a sponge to water. He absorbed what she taught with a zeal that made Orochimaru seem tame in comparison. Not that she would ever compare him to that Tem. 
Naruto had come a long way from his brawler style when they started. He was able to take her snake style and change most of the basic katas to make his own style that he liked to call, Arakan, meaning back fist. He mainly focused on dodging or blocking strikes and delivering devastating counter strikes. He had a few offensive katas but they were mostly basic ideas at this point. He was, by no standards, an expert but he could pass for a mid-level genin and she expected he could probably fight off a chunin if he was prepared with his seals. She had also been able to help him with his stealth and chakra control. He was able to do water walking rather well but still needed to work on it. His stealth was easily anbu level as even she had trouble finding the blonde haired nuisance when he really wanted to hide. When he changed into clothes that didn't make him a neon sign, he could probably infiltrate the Hokage Tower and get away with it. Back to the girls, they spent the rest of the afternoon chatting about different things like clothing trends, which Anko ignored of course, Naruto's pranks, which they all found amusingly enjoyable, and missions. They parted ways around 5pm and Anko made her way to meet her unofficial student. She expected much out of him and hoped to see more progress soon. Time skip. One month two months since Naruto met Anko. Naruto was in his lab when he suddenly jumped up and yelled, Eureka I did it. In a very un-Naruto-like way, he started to dance around until he heard chuckling coming from his head. Congratulations Naruto-kun, you have successfully completed the seal to remove Anko's blemish. Hikari said with a tone of mirth at her containers, and mates, actions. He could act like such a child when he was excited. Naruto scratched the back of his head, he he sorry about that. But thank you, it would have taken another month without your help, he thought. He only got a mental blush from the praise before he started cleaning up his lab and thinking of ways to tell Anko about both Hikari and the seal. Hikari and Naruto chatted back and forth for an hour before deciding on a course of action. They didn't want to frighten their new friend and lose her help. They decided that telling her about Hikari first would be the best idea. She would probably overreact to the fact that he could remove her curse seal and not let up until he did it. Naruto nodded in acceptance of the plans they made and immediately set up the lab to remove her curse seal. There was no way they could do it anywhere else. It took him two hours to set up the seals and double check everything to make sure it was in place. He wiped the sweat from his brow and nodded in appreciation of his hard work before turning to the clock and noticing it was 7 p.m. He only had half an hour to eat and meet with Anko for his nightly training session. He quickly showered and ate three cups of instant ramen before bolting out the door into the forest of death. Forest of death. 7.32 p.m. Anko tapped her foot on the tree branch as she waited for her student. He was never late before and she was beginning to worry when she saw his orange clothes burst through the tree line outside the forest of death and proceed to hop over the fence. She smiled inwardly. She had really come to both respect and like the blonde ball of energy. Even if he was serious when they were alone, he was always happy to see her and train with her. It's nice to have someone appreciate me for once, she thought to herself as Naruto landed on the branch next to her. Naruto landed and smiled brightly at his friend, Sensei. She had taught him much in the past two months and he was deeply indebted to her. He decided to cut straight to the chase as he knew she did not like to beat around the bush. Anko Chan. Anko looked at him intently. I have something private I wish to speak with you about, so could we forego training tonight and head back to the lab? He asked. Anko raised an eyebrow and replied, I guess so, Gaki, because you haven't missed any of our sessions yet, and today was the only day you were late. What's so important that you want to be in the lab for it? She asked curiously. Naruto looked around before turning his back to her and readied himself to jump. The reason why I'm hated. He replied before jumping away hoping that was enough to get her to follow him. Anko stood there for a second processing what he said before she sprung after him. Did someone tell him he was the Kyubi? Oh god, I hope not. I'm gonna kill whoever told him. She thought as she increased her speed to try and catch the orange blur. Naruto's lab. 7.45 pm. Naruto landed and immediately went inside before setting up the two chairs he had in the main room. The seal setup he planned to use was in one of the smaller rooms so Anko wouldn't see them too early. He sighed and tried to calm his nerves as Hikari whispered soothing promises from the back of his mind. 
He looked up as the door opened and Anko stepped in only to immediately sit down in the open chair and stare at him, obviously expecting an explanation. Naruto sighed again and looked Anko straight in the eyes, I hate to say this again but I need your oath as a kunoichi and as a person that you will not reveal anything of what I say here today. If this information got into the hands of the civilian populace I have no doubt that I would be killed almost instantaneously. He said seriously. Anko's brain was in overdrive. The last time he had only come off with half his secrets. It seems like he trusted her enough to tell her all of them now. That one thought made her nod her head in acceptance. No one else had trusted her with all of their secrets. I swear an oath on my pride as a kunoichi and a woman that I shall not reveal what you tell me here. She replied seriously. Naruto smiled at her. Thank you Anko-chan, I promise you will be happy by the end of this discussion. He said confusing her. Why would she be happy? Please do not interrupt me until I am finished with telling you my story okay? He asked. She nodded so he continued. Two months ago I met you but I also met the Kayubi no Kitsune two days before that. Let me start out by saying that she is not what everyone makes her out to be. Yes Kayubi is a she and her name is Hikari. Anko's jaw dropped before she suddenly pumped her fist in the air. Hell yeah another one for the girls. She yelled enthusiastically. Naruto groaned as Hikari spoke up. I knew there was a reason I like her. Tehi. Hikari mentioned. Yes yes. Anyways, I was being beaten by a mob on my birthday and I was eventually knocked unconscious. I met up with Hikari-chan who was throwing herself against the seal trying to get out to help me. That got an appreciative and surprised look from Anko, a rather funny sight actually, and a mental blush from Hikari. We talked for a while before I agreed to sign a contract with her that stated she would give me a bloodline and, in return, I would be able to give her a body and chakra outside of my body from time to time. Well, that and I am officially her maid but that's just bonus. He said with a smile at the end. Anko took a moment to take her jaw off the floor and shook her head. Only you Gaki, I'll trust you with Hikari, for now, but could I meet her? She replied. Hikari smirked in his mind as Naruto nodded and he molded her body next to him. As soon as she was formed, she moved behind him and wrapped her arms around his neck, pressing her, assets, against the back of his head. Hello Anko-chan, I am Hikari, the Kayubi no Kitsune. Thank you for taking care of Naruto-kun for me, I can only do so much, she said. Anko's mind went blank for a second before it rebooted and reminded her about Hikari being mated to Naruto so she ignored her blatant ulity and said, let's just get one thing straight, I'll trust you because the Gaki trusts you. But, he pulled out a kanai and started playing with it, you hurt him and not even Kami could keep you safe from me. She said seriously. Hikari chuckled, I won't hurt him. I am making a few cosmetic changes though. Naruto-kun agreed with it all beforehand so it's far game. She said. Anko nodded and put her kanai away. Naruto sighed and said, since you're fine with that, I have another bombshell for you. Anko gave him her full attention. He took a deep breath and said, I can remove your cursed seal. Time seemed to stop for Anko. Not even Jiraiya could remove the damn thing and Naruto was telling her that he could remove it. It shouldn't be possible and yet, she had seen some of his seals and she knew he was serious when he said he had a knack for them. Her eyes hardened as she glared at Naruto, Gaki, if you're messing with me not even Kayubi could help you. She said coldly. Naruto flinched slightly, I'm not lying, I have everything set up and was going to remove it for you whether you kept my secrets or not. He responded. Anko looked into his eyes and didn't see any deception. For almost five minutes, they stared at one another until Anko spoke again. Gaki, you remove this seal and I am your for life. You want to me every day for the rest of my life, fine. You wanna get a group of your friends and gangbang me, I'll do it all with a smile on my face. Hell you can cut off my for all I care. Just remove this damn seal. She said yelling at the end. Her eyes had tears in them as she desperately wanted to be rid of this stain on her soul. Naruto opened his mouth to respond that she didn't have to do that when Hikari forced it closed. He looked at her curiously as did Anko before she wagged her finger at Naruto. She knew what he was going to say and she wouldn't allow it. She walked over to Anko and said, stand up. Anko was confused but did as she said. Hikari circled Anko slowly, 
touching her and testing her body like one would a piece of fine meat before she nodded in acceptance. She had only seen Anko's body, she wanted to test it first before she put her plan into action. She smirked as she leant in and whispered hotly into Anko's ear. You made a good offer right there and I intend to make you live up to it. As a little incentive, I'm going to tell you what I'm doing to his body for the future. Anko's eyes were fluttering as she felt the hot breath on her neck and ear, he's already got stamina in spades so that's an easy one. I've already increased his sperm count so, when he's grown, he'll be able to comb buckets easily. I'm making sure his body will be supremely flexible for both combat and the activities in the bedroom. Already, Anko was having trouble hiding her increasing arousal but the best was soon to come, the last and most important thing I'm doing. He's going to be hung like a horse. She said horse with a very full tone sending shivers up Anko's spine and sending her mind straight into the gutter. By the time I'm done, he's going to be at least eight and a half to nine inches long and three inches wide. Hikari said finishing her explanation and giving Anko a very welcome nosebleed. Think you can handle that? Receiving a nod from the purple-haired woman, she smiled. Good. She stepped back to Naruto and said, Naruto-kun, accept her generous offer. Naruto looked at Hikari like she was nuts. I don't want her to be a slave, he started to say until Hikari cut him off seeing as Anko was still daydreaming. Look she wants to do it, besides, you're probably going to be under that CRA thing anyways. Better with girls you know and trust, maybe love someday, than some hussy that will leave at the first sign of trouble right. Hikari said, Anko came around by this time and was nodding with Hikari's words. Naruto looked a bit unsure and was about to decline when Anko crossed the room and grabbed Naruto before full-on-ing him. Naruto melted into the as Anko gently probed his mouth. They broke for air panting as Anko looked at Naruto, that good enough for ya. She said. Naruto nodded dumbly. Good let's go get this seal off. She said as she dropped Naruto and turned to head out of the room. Hikari stepped up to Anko and put a firm hand on her shoulder. That was his first. You won that, but I'm the one who gets to take his virginity got it. She said too sweetly to be real. Anko nodded nervously and Hikari smiled brightly, great. I know we will get along just fine Anko-chan. She said as she wrapped her arm around Anko's shoulder and led her to the room where the unsealing would take place. Naruto struggled up with a dazed look on his face before it split into a goofy grin. If that's what it feels like, damn I'm glad I got two beautiful women to do that with. And, according to the CRA, I'm gonna need more. H-E-H-E-H-E-H-E-H-E, -E 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 -E, he thought as he headed for the ceiling room. No he will not be an open pervert, only for his girls. Ceiling room. 8.45 p.m. Naruto stood behind Anko who had her shirt and trench coat off as he painted the seal onto her back and over the cursed seal. He took his time to ensure that every piece of the seal was perfect and in place. He double-checked and triple-checked the seal on her while Hikari checked the seals he had set up beforehand. Hikari gave him the sign that everything was okay and then disappeared back into her cage so she could complete her part of the unsealing. Naruto had set up an amalgamation of seals. One seal purged the strange chemical that allowed the seal to change the user's mind and body. Another would actually reverse the damages made by the seal. This could not be used for medical reasons because it was specifically made to counteract the chemical compound. Yet another would expel Orochimaru's soul from the seal so that the user's body could, once again, reach its full potential. The last one, made specifically for this night, redirected that piece of Orochimaru's soul into the seal on Naruto's stomach so Hikari could have some fun with the bastard. Naruto nodded as he took his place in the sealing circle. He looked towards Anko who nodded. All right, this is going to hurt a lot. Please bear through it, he said. She nodded and pulled out a strip of leather before biting into it. Naruto nodded once more before running through a few activation hand seals and saying, Fuin Hakai. Seal destruction and slamming his hands onto the seal. Anko felt like every cell in her body was being lit on fire only to be doused and then reset on fire again. It hurt worse than when the seal was first applied. She screamed into the leather strip until her throat was raw and she was heaving for breathe before it finally ended. It had felt like hours but, in reality, only took about two minutes. 
She collapsed heaving for breath and was able to turn her head to see Naruto smile warmly at her before she blacked out with a smile on her face. Naruto smiled at Anko and it just intensified as he heard Hikari start tearing into the soul piece that was being utterly destroyed in his mindscape. He got up and slowly walked over to Anko before half dragging her to the bed in the lab and setting the alarm for 8 a.m. He had miscalculated the chakra needed to destroy the seal and had ended up using nearly all of his Junin level chakra to destroy it. He sighed as he laid down on the floor next to the Fudan. The next thing he knew, he was inside of Anko's arms as she crushed him to her body. He blushed but promptly passed out from not having any chakra. Hikari giggled in his mind but didn't wake her container. It would be funny to see their reaction in the morning. Naruto's Lab. 8 AM. Naruto awoke to find himself in a very comfortable position. His head was being pushed into the generous cleavage of one Anko Midarashi. He also noted that he had one of the most restful sleeps of his life. He sighed as he slowly got out of bed and went to make a real breakfast. He had started to henge and buy regular food ever since two months ago but he still loved ramen. He spent a good 15 minutes making a breakfast of eggs and toast before he calmly poured two glasses of orange juice and bringing them to the study bedroom. He walked in only to see Anko smirking at him. You know, usually, I'd kill a man for being in my breasts. She said nonchalantly. Naruto started sweating even as he put the breakfast in front of her on a tray. Good start, she said before she started laughing at the look of complete terror on his face. Calm down Naruto-kun. After all, I ed you yesterday and you removed my seal as promised. She smiled softly at him before it turned into a smirk, if you want to touch them all you have to do is ask, Naruto-sama. She said fully. Naruto promptly turned a shade of red to make Hinata jealous and began to shovel in his food. Oh yeah, we are gonna get along juiced fine, Anko-chan. Hikari said as she laughed in Naruto's mind. Stupid perverted girls. Naruto thought still blushing causing Hikari to laugh even harder. Suddenly, Naruto remembered something. Anko-chan, I know you probably want to go run and tell everyone you're free of your seal but can I ask you to wait off on that until I'm a genin. If the civilians knew I had access to Orotem's notes. He let the answer trail. Anko sighed, yes that's fine. I swear those civilians need to die because all these secrets you have to keep are stupid. You shouldn't have to hide for fear of retribution for something you do exceptionally well. She said with a frown. Naruto nodded in agreement. I know what you mean. I'm sad I have to hide it but, once I'm a genin, it won't matter because I'll be under the old man. Not to mention I'll be considered a legal adult. He said. Anko smiled. I can't wait for that day Naruto-kun. She looked at the clock and noticed it was about 9am. Shit, I've got an interrogation at 9.15. Sorry but I've gotta go Naruto-kun. I'll see you for training tonight. She got up and threw her shirt and trench coat on. She wavered for a second before ing Naruto goodbye on the cheek and dashing out of the door. Naruto's face split into a goofy grin again as he cleaned up the breakfast dishes. Naruto was walking to the academy smiling in his mask like normal. Still, he was actually happy for once. Today were the genin exams and the first time he would drop his mask around his classmates. He was still wearing his orange jumpsuit, but he would soon change out of that when he passed the exam. He was going to really show his abilities when the time came. He could fight off a decent chunin now. His resistance seal was at level 4 and, when removed, would let him be about as fast as a high level junin, granted he couldn't fight at that level just yet but he was making steady progress. His seals were ingenious and he smiled as he remembered all the work he had done in making sure he could make the seals in midair with his finger. It had taken him a good month of pure chakra control to let it happen but it was combat ready. His ninjutsu consisted of cage bunshin and shunshin, those being the only ninjutsu that Hikari could teach him and Anko wasn't allowed to teach him legally so he never asked to ensure that their relationship remained a secret. That didn't mean that, when they were alone, she didn't tease him mercilessly with Hikari happily aiding her in making the blonde-haired boy blush like mad. They loved to creep up behind him while he was working on a seal and snuggle his head into their breasts trying to make him guess which girl was holding him. Surprisingly, he got it right 90% of the time. He sighed as he walked into the academy. 
Hikari had asked to leave the seal for about a month three weeks ago for some reason she refused to tell him claiming that it was a secret. He had a quest when she had ed him silly. Still, he was worried about her. They had been together since his birth and he felt empty without her around. He had grown used to her advice and suggestions and was missing it terribly. Anko was good for ninjutsu and taijutsu but seals were beyond her. She had kept her promise not to show her destroyed curse seal to her friends but that would be null and void come tomorrow. He walked into the classroom and sat down at his desk. He noticed the blush on Hinata's face, thanks to his girl's constant teasing he now knew that she liked him. Too bad her image of him would shatter soon enough. He sighed and leaned back in his chair waiting for, his, Sakura-chan to come in. He would need to keep up his act around the students except when he acutely took the tests. He was pretty sure that Shikamaru and, maybe, Shino would pick up on the change, but he doubted anyone else would. He noticed that the room filled up and Sasuke sitting in the chair next to him making him mentally curse up a storm. Damn Uchiha, he knows that Sakura and Ino are gonna kick me out of this seat. Naruto thought as he heard rumbling coming from outside the academy and, then, down the halls. Akamaru whimpered and ducked into the hoodie that Kiba was wearing, while covering his ears. Kiba's eyes widened and he yelled, hit the deck, before he dove under his desk and covered his ears much like his canine friend. Suddenly the door burst open and two girls were standing in the doorway. A. N. Unless I say otherwise all characters have their pre-Shippuden outfits. Sakura Haruno and Ino Yamanaka were both stuck in the doorframe glaring at one another heatedly while screaming at the top of their lungs about fighting for, there, Sasuke-kun. Naruto mentally rolled his eyes and prepared for his grandiose performance of liking the pink-haired banshee. Honoestly, he couldn't stand her and had only picked her because he knew she would refuse him constantly and would not create trouble with the villagers thinking the demon brat had a girlfriend. Anko and Hikari don't count, they're too strong to fall to such ignorant bigots. Naruto smiled as they tumbled into the room and quickly got up to help, his, Sakura-chan to her feet. Let me help you Sakura-chan, Naruto said loudly as he rushed down the stairs and purposefully tripped and collided into the swirling mass of limbs that was Ino and Sakura. That earned him a double punch, one from Ino and one from Sakura. I don't need your help Dobi, Sakura said rudely and quickly stalked off to continue arguing with Ino about seating arrangements around the Uchiha. Naruto just kept his mask up and stood up before making his way to a nearby seat. Aruka and Mizuki walked in not even a minute later and Aruka used his patented, big head no jutsu, to shut everyone up. Good now, we will begin the genin examinations. The first part is a written test on aspects of a shinobi's life and history of Konoha. The second part is a taijutsu spar between either myself or Mizuki sensei in which you must last at least three minutes or land a decisive blow. The third part is a weapons accuracy test in which you must throw 10 shuriken and 10 kanai at varying targets with more points for distance and accuracy. The final part will be a showing of the three academy jutsus in order to show you are proficient in its use. If everyone will remain quiet, we can begin, Uruka said as he passed Naruto a paper. He never noticed the scowl on Mizuki's face as he did so. Hokage's office. Same time. Many aspiring Junin sensei were gathered in the Hokage's office to view their potential students. Anko Mitarashi, Kakashi Hitaki, Kurunai Yuhi, and Asuma Serutobi, just to name a few, were watching with some interest, although Kakashi was still reading his book. Anko was watching because Naruto was there and she could notice that he was blazing through the test like it was a bowl of ramen. Kakashi was watching the last Uchiha, as ordered by the stuck-up civilian council, not that he minded watching over someone he believed was his responsibility. Kurunai was paying special attention to the Hyuga heiress and Asuma was mostly eyeing Kurunai with a few peeks at Shikamaru. Sarutobi cleared his throat gaining the people's attention. You are all here today to observe the graduating class at the academy. I hope you can all make wise choices in your teams this year, he said before returning to spying on the students. Academy. Taijutsu Tests. Naruto was sure he had aced the test, although he kept up his act and took the full time allotted for the test. Now they were moving on to something Naruto was sure wouldn't be a problem, if he didn't get Mizuki. He was not blind to the subterfuge and tricks to make his stance or skills worse throughout the year. 
He could also tell that Mizuki had something sinister planned because he kept eyeing Naruto like he was the Forbidden Scroll or something. They went down the list of applicants and Naruto sighed at the horrendous display that the civilian kids, not to mention Shudders, the fangirls, put on during their turns. The Shinobi kids were a different story, for the most part. Choji thoroughly won his match with a hit on Uruka at 2 minutes and 48 seconds. Kiba did slightly better at 2 minutes and 39 seconds. Shikamaru, surprisingly, lasted the 3 minutes as did Ino and Sakura. Hanada was too timid to outright attack Mizuki so she lasted the full 3 minutes without a single hit on her. Shino lasted the 3 minutes, but that was more due to his family style which revolved around dodging and blocking instead of attacking. Naruto counted the remaining students and mentally cursed. Sasuke was next and it was Aruka's turn, that meant Mizuki would be Naruto's sparring partner. He sighed as he watched Sasuke get a hit on Aruka after 1 minute and 37 seconds. Great. My turn with Mizuki Tem. Naruto thought bitterly. He ran out to the field and turned around to smile at Sakura. Hey Sakura-chan watch me. He yelled, only getting a glare in response. Mizuki smirked at Naruto thinking of the ways to make him fail. Naruto nodded to him before slipping into his own personal style the Arukan backfist style. Mizuki's eyes widened a bit before his grin grew. If the demon is trying a new taijutsu style out, he'll be even easier pickings than before. Mizuki thought as he started the spar and ran full bore at Naruto. Naruto smirked and began to move around Mizuki's hits like they were nothing. The class was stunned, it had been nearly a minute and even Aruka was staring in shock. Mizuki was obviously going full out and he still couldn't touch Naruto. Naruto, from his perspective, was disappointed. This is the caliber of a chunin of Konoha, he thought. Mizuki's taijutsu was high genin at best, and this was supposed to be his best area. He was sorely missing his training with Anko right now. Two minutes later and Aruka finally called the match saying that the time limit was up. Mizuki stopped but he was panting hard while Naruto looked only slightly winded. Most of the students figured that Mizuki went easy on him while only three believed differently. Ia Alwa Ays knew why you were street strong Naruto-kun. Hanada thought while blushing, hem his grades do not reflect accurately on this performance. Mizuki-san was not holding back and Naruto-san looks barely troubled. I should have suspected this outcome considering my new hive. Shino thought as he reflected on the new colony he had received via Naruto Uzumaki. Hold your horses folks this will be explained later. This is too troublesome to think about but Naruto is stronger than he seems. Shikamaru thought before going back to watching the clouds. Naruto walked off and yelled something obnoxious, causing many to reaffirm that the Dobi got lucky. Naruto simply cackled in his mind and looked into the air before shooting a thumbs up and a smile. The intended recipient, Anko, chuckled in the Hokage office. So he knows we are watching A. Eh? The Kunoichi thought and checked the surroundings. It seems no one else noticed. Back with Naruto, he lined up for the accuracy test and stayed mostly silent while keeping up his happy and innocent Dobi, mask. He, again, mentally sighed at the poor scores from the civilian kids, most who joined for either Glory or the Uchiha, mostly girls. Naruto paid attention when the clan heirs and Sakura, whom he cheered for, took their tests however. Shikamaru scored a 6 on both, the minimum to pass. Same case with Choji and Kiba. Hanada was 7 tenths for Kanai and 6 tenths for Shuriken. Ino and Sakura both barely passed with a 6 on both. Shino, however, got a 9 on the kanai and a 7 on the shuriken. When Sasuke stepped up and received his kanai and shuriken, Naruto noticed that it was one of the best sets around. He scowled mentally and scoffed as he watched the Uchiha smirk and show off. He threw 5 of the shuriken wide and then threw the last 5 with such force that he altered all of their paths right into the bullseye. That got a squell from the fangirls and a grumble from Choji and Kiba. Sasuke picked up the kanai and threw them one by one but he only got a nine tenths on that. He turned around and smirked confidently before heading off to brood on his own. It was Naruto's turn and he wasn't in the mood to show off any more of his abilities, his taijutsu being showcased already. He grabbed the shuriken and, one by one, hit the bullseye on the farthest ones, scoring a perfect ten out of ten. As the class went silent and Aruka congratulated Naruto, he picked up the kanais and proceeded to repeat this act. 
Another 10 out of 10 for the Kanais. Everyone's jaw dropped. The Dobi had scored a perfect on the Taijutsu and the accuracy tests now. That just did not happen. Shino was curious until his logical mind thought of the solution, so you took the shinobi's code of deception to its finest. Well played Naruto-san, I hope to see more from you, he thought. Hanada was mentally drooling over a strong Naruto and Shikamaru still thought this was too troublesome. Hokage office. Same time. The Junins, hell even the Hokage, were shocked. Naruto Uzumaki, the dead last of his class, had just won the taijutsu and the weapons accuracy tests. Anko suddenly busted out laughing. Everyone focused on her even as she started crying and then wheezing from their stares. She knew the real reason for Naruto's strength and it was just too funny to see all these hypocritical bastards getting a taste of sweet revenge. Kakashi was actually paying attention and spoke up. Hokage-sama, are we sure that nothing is influencing him? He asked. The Hokage furrowed his brows but it was Anko who answered. Man, for the guy who coined, see underneath the underneath, you sure don't take it to heart huh? She asked. All eyes turned to her, please explain yourself Anko. Sarutobi said, fishing for information. Anko mentally chuckled but kept a poker face on. Looking for info, I guess I can indulge you a bit, she thought. What's the first sentence in the shinobi handbook? She asked. The Hokage arched an eyebrow and replied, a shinobi's best and most reliable tool, is, deception. He replied figuring it out. Anko chuckled aloud this time. That's right, now, what's the best way to ensure that no one thinks you're a threat? She asked. Kakashi spoke up this time and replied, underestimation. He said figuring out where she was going with this. She clapped. Good one eye. Naruto Uzumaki is known as a prankster who can outrun and hide from Anbu. Really did no one see through this before? She asked curiously. The crowd was silent. Suddenly, she busted out laughing just like before. She wiped a tear from her eye. You really think the dead last can outrun Anbu? Kami people, you really are dense. She said offering no more information. Sarutobi rubbed his temples. Great, just great. If he's hiding more, could he be in contact with Kayubi? This is a serious breach and I need to make sure that he's still loyal to Konoha. He thought. Suddenly Naruto's voice rang out through the jutsu used to display the exams and everyone looked to see him standing outside alone and looking to the sky. I know you're watching Oji-san and I know that Anko-san has probably spilled that I hid my abilities. Keep watch on Mizuki, I think he's up to something. Have a good day Oji-san. He said with a chuckle at the end as he walked inside. The room grew silent until Serutobi spoke again. Anko-san, you are to watch Mizuki for any signs of disciot or traitorous acts starting now. Leave the room once the exams are over and tail him. He ordered. Anko nodded and everyone turned their attention back to the exams. Academy classroom. Ninjutsu tests. Naruto walked in just as the first person was called into the back room to begin the final examination. He took his seat and cheered when Sakura came back out of her test. Kami I can't wait to pass this test so I can drop this stupid mask. Naruto thought to himself, although, I know Oji-san is going to speak to me about this, probably even make sure I'm still loyal to Konoha. Even if he believes I am, he's still going to put someone on my team who can control me if I let Kayubi-chan out. Good thing I gave Shino that bug, he may prove useful. Naruto thought, what most people didn't know was that Naruto was on good terms with Shino, and most of the Abarames, so he doubted that Shino would hurt him if something happened. Naruto Uzumaki, Uruka said, Naruto smiled brightly and jumped up to take the test. He ran down the steps, tripping at the bottom to ensure that his mask was still ironclad, and scratched the back of his head nervously as he entered the exam room. Uruka smiled at him, along with a fake smile from Mizuki, and said, all right Naruto, you need to perform a kawarimi, henge, and a bunshin technique to pass this portion. You can also show an additional jutsu for extra credit, Uruka said, gaining a nod from his favorite student. Ready, he asked. Naruto nodded again and promptly switched with a chair when Mizuki hummed an eraser at his head. He switched back and Uruka said, henge into the third Hokage please. Naruto nodded and performed the jutsu. Uruka and Mizuki checked it out. Mizuki taking a full minute longer than Aruka, before declaring it, 
Passable, from Mizuki and, Great, from Uruka. Now please perform a bunshin, Uruka said. Naruto raised his hand like he had a question causing Uruka to raise an eye. Yes Naruto, he asked. Can it be any bunshin or does it have to be the illusionary ones? He asked. Uruka thought for a second before grabbing the rulebook and skimming through the pages. It states here that any bunshin may be used if the user has too much chakra to support the illusionary one. Uruka replied. Mizuki scowled mentally and simply stared closely at Naruto. Naruto smiled and said, Thanks Uruka sensei. Cage bunshin no jutsu, shadow clone jutsu, and five Naruto stood smiling brightly at a stunned Uruka and a scowling Mizuki. Uruka stammered out a, why you pass Naruto? But, how did you learn a kinjutsu? He asked. Naruto chuckled. I watched some dog-masked Anbu do it in a training field one time and memorized the hand seals thinking that I might be able to do it instead of the regular bunshin, since cage bunshin costs far more than the regular one. He answered. In the Hokage Tower, Serutobi was glaring at Kakashi because he had been so careless. Anko was mentally chuckling and everyone else was stunned. Naruto had learned to do a kinjutsu just by seeing it done once. Impressive. Back with Naruto, Uruka handed him a headband with a giant smile and Naruto yelled and, all right. He smiled brightly and ran out the door to show off his new Hidaiate. Most of the students were stunned but Hinata, Shikamaru and Shino all had their own thoughts, mostly positive ones. Naruto smirked as the teachers came out and dismissed them telling them to be back tomorrow for team assignments. Naruto promptly ran to Ichiraku's and began to pig out on ramen, courteous of Chuki and Ayame. He was able to eat ten bowls before an Anbu showed up and said that the Hokage had summoned him to his office. Naruto sighed and nodded his head before paying for his dinner and leaving with the Anbu. Hokage's office. Naruto's ninjutsu exam time. Serutobi had finished glaring at Kakashi and nodded to Anko, who had taken her leave to spy on the academy teacher. He turned back to the aspiring Junin sensei and said, I will now take suggestions and requests for students. He said. He nodded to Kakashi, who had the most senior rank among them and he stood up. I request Sasuke Uchiha, Sakura Haruno and Naruto Uzumaki for my team. He said before sitting back down. Serutobi frowned. Because of Naruto's performance, he knew he couldn't accept that team because it would be far too overpowered. Besides, that he knew that Naruto needed someone who could control the Kyubi, now more than ever, if his skills were better than before. Serutobi couldn't have a Kyubi fied genin running around now could he? He nodded and said, noted. Asuma stood up next and said, I'll take the next Inoshika Cho team. He quickly sat back down, being the lazy man that he is. Serutobi nodded and a few of the other Junins stood up and requested Sasuke, but were summarily denied. Finally, Kurinai stood up and said, I request Hinata Hayuga, Shino Aburame, and Kiba Inazuka for a tracking team. She said before sitting back down. Only one person had not gone and that was because he didn't want to be here, but was ordered to due to certain, talents of his. Serutobi sighed and then took another hit of his cancer pot, you know. His pipe. He thought for a few seconds more before he nodded his head in agreement with himself. I see all of your teams as acceptable according to the current scores of the genin but we must wait for Aruka before we finalize this. He replied to them and so they waited. Not five minutes later, Uruka walked through the door with the test results. He held them up and, with a nod from Serutobi, began to rattle off the scores. All of the civilians, minus Sakura, passed barely but would be weeded out with the real genin exams. Shikamaru Nara, 60.1% overall, pass, Choji Akamichi 62.8% overall, pass, Kiba Inazuka 68.5% overall, pass, Ino Yamanaka 73% overall, pass, Sakura Haruno, 73.2% overall, pass, Hinata Hayuga 89.3% overall, pass, Sasuke Uchiha 98.4% overall, pass, and Naruto Uzumaki, 100% overall, pass. The Junins were quiet until Kurinai spoke quietly, what was Uzumaki's score again? She said. Uruka smirked. A 100% perfect score Kurinai-san. Naruto seems to have progressed immensely. He replied. The Sandame furrowed his brows and sighed, Thank you Uruka. 
Would you like to stay for team placements and, perhaps, offer some insight into who would work well together? He said. Aruka nodded and replied, Sakura Haruno and Ino Yamanaka would not work well together, same with Naruto Uzumaki and Sasuke Uchiha. Choji Akamichi and Shikamaru Nara would work well with any of the other students, as would Hinata Hayuga. Kiba Inazuka is a bit brash but he is loyal to a fault. Shino Aburame would work well with any logical teams, other than that, I have no suggestions Hokage-sama. Serutobi nodded, good, in that case, he looked to the Junins, your requests are being mostly altered, you will be given teams that could work well together. He said, the Junins did not look happy but held their tongues out of respect for the old Hokage. Ah before I forget, he snapped his fingers and an Anbu stood next to him, please bring me Naruto Uzumaki, he will likely be at Ichiraku Ramen. The Anbu bowed and disappeared. He looked back to the Junins. Now, Team 7, led by Kakashi Hitaki, will be Sasuke Uchiha, Choji Akamichi, and Kiba Inazuka. Team 8, led by Kurunai Yuhi, will be Sakura Haruno, Hinata Hayuga, and Shikamaru Nara. He said getting surprised looks from many. Kakashi was a bit surprised but noticed the hard hitters, hunter team he was given and shrugged as it suited his style. Kurunai, on the other hand, was a bit perturbed and spoke up. Hokage-sama, what am I supposed to do with that team? She asked. Serutobi sighed again, Kurunai, Hinata has the Bukugan, Shikamaru is actually a genius, as are all Nara, with a shadow bind, and Sakura is supposedly ripe for a genjutsu mistress. Tell me, what could they excel in? He asked. Kurunai thought for a moment before bowing her head. I apologize Hokage-sama, they could be a perfect ambush team, they could do well with infiltration as well, if their planning and stealth abilities work out. She replied. The Sandame waved off the apology and said, Now, since that's cleared up, Team 10, led by Yamato, will be Naruto Uzumaki, Shino Aburame, and Ino Yamanaka. Yamato, a man who was very stoic side as he guessed this was going to happen. He knew why he and Shino were being placed on Naruto's team and he was pretty sure that Ino was being placed because she was an expert in the human PH psych, as was all of her clan, so she would notice, quirks about Naruto that may escape even Shinobi. Hi, Hokage-sama, he said. Once the teams were announced, the Anbu showed back up with Naruto who smiled brightly at Serutobi. Hey Oji-san, did you like the show? He asked. Serutobi chuckled and replied, it was most entertaining Naruto. I hope you will tell me how you did it. Naruto grew serious and stared the Hokage straight in the eye, when you come clean, I'll come clean. He countered. The temperature in the room dropped a few degrees and several of the Junins began to grow nervous and tensed, getting ready for a battle. Naruto sighed and the tense atmosphere lessened, so, you gonna start grilling me or gonna ask Ibiki-san to do that for you? He asked almost jokingly. Serutobi laughed, no number. Still, I am curious as to how you kept hidden all this time and how you knew Mizuki was up to something. He replied. Naruto sighed before he sat down in the chair in front of the Hokage's desk and kicked up his feet. People hate me Oji-san. If I showed what I could really do, even with sabotage in the academy, then people would get more violent or even get the council involved. I'm not stupid Oji-san, I can tell that people fear me, although I don't know why. As for Mizuki, well, he's been eyeing me like Orochimaru would when he gets a new little but buddy. He said. That threw even the Kami no Shinobi for a loop. Still the Sandame chuckled before he grew serious, I'm sorry Naruto-kun. People are ignorant and can't see what they're missing. Mizuki is being tailed by Anko as we speak so thank you for the tip. He replied. Naruto nodded, ya whatever, don't apologize for them Oji-san. So. Who's my Junin sensei when I pass the real genin test? He asked. Serutobi raised an eyebrow, so you knew about that too. He sighed and looked into the crowd, secretly looking to Yamato who nodded his head and stepped forward. This is Yamato, he recently quit Anbu and wanted to become a Junin sensei. He said. Yamato nodded to Naruto who nodded back and said, You seem level headed. It'll be a pleasure working with you. If that's all Oji san, I'm gonna go celebrate some more. Serutobi nodded and Naruto shocked them once again as he shunshined away in a flash of dark black powder that was swept out of the window. 
The sand dame looked sadly at where the boy once sat. No child should have to hide their abilities in fear of being persecuted even more. He sighed and dismissed the Junin who all left their old leader to his paperwork. Time skip. That night, Mizuki chuckled as he leapt through the rooftops with the forbidden scroll in his hands. He chuckled mentally, even though he couldn't pin it on the Kyubi brat, he would be able to hide out with Orochimaru-sama supporting him. He burst through the tree line and landed on a branch, which he immediately abandoned as it blew up the second his foot left the branch. He landed in a clearing and immediately started to scan his surroundings. Suddenly, a kanai came out of the brush and scratched his cheek. Mizuki's eyes widened as he realized just WHO was chasing him. Enko san, I'm taking this scroll back to your master, why would you stop me? Mizuki asked, never let it be said that Mizuki was a good judge of character. Enko burst out of the bushes with a fire in her eyes. That bastard was never my master. She roared as she advanced on an unsuspecting chunin. Warning. The scene of torture and removal of manly parts was so gruesome that the author has censored it for the viewer's sanity. Thank you. Enko skipped happily into the Hokage's office as the Anbu dragged away a mutilated, yet still alive, Mizuki. She smirked at the Hokage and said, Mission accomplished. Sarutboy smiled, Good work Enko-san. I'll have Ibiki take care of him. He replied. Enko smiled again and said, Well, if that's all, I'll be going then. She turned around to leave when Serutobi spoke again. Just a moment, Anko san he said. She turned around and he motioned to the chair in front of his desk. She took it quietly a little curious as to what he needed to speak with her about so late in the night. I would like for you to tell me everything you believe Naruto-kun is capable of. He said seriously. Anko frowned, just ask him yourself. I don't keep that close a watch on him. I simply knew that the boy couldn't be the dead last they say he is if he could outrun and hide from Anbu like that. She replied. Serutobi matched Anko's frown, please don't lie to me. I can tell that you know more than you're letting on. He countered. Anko sighed and glared at the Hokage, I won't betray his trust willingly Hokage-sama. I can tell you, he's probably about Chunin level right now. Other than that, I won't elaborate without his permission. She replied hoping to satisfy the Hokage and Naruto. Serutobi stared at the Kunoichi for a moment before sighing and nodding in acceptance. Fine, I have kept a secret from him long enough, I guess he can keep his for a little while. He told her. Anko glared again, and when do you plan to tell him about his burden? It's obvious he doesn't trust you now so why not tell him the reason why he's hated? All you do by keeping it from him is hurt him more, she said. Serutobi glared back and caused Anko to back off, he will be told when it becomes necessary and not a moment before. He needs to have as normal a life as possible before he is saddled with that responsibility, he replied. Anko sighed and looked at the Hokage, he's never had a, normal, life and you know it. Still, I won't press the issue as it isn't my place. I won't tell him anything either but I still stand by what I said earlier, she said before walking out of the office. Serutobi took a long draft from his pipe and sighed, she has a point but the boy must be loyal to the village before he learns of his burden. He thought as he headed home for the night. Next day. Naruto's apartment. Naruto smirked as he woke up and did his morning routine. Today was the day he showed just how strong he was. He did one last check over he body when he noticed something in the mirror. He took a closer look before his eyes narrowed intensely. There was a complex seal on his back. As quickly as he noticed it, it started to fade away. Oh number you don't, Naruto said loudly as he summoned a few stasis seals from the seal on his arm and slapped them on each of his shoulders and right above his waist. Box formation on his back. He glared at his reflection as he tried to get a clear view of it but was severely hampered because he had only one mirror. He sighed and thought for a second before snapping his fingers as he figured it out. He quickly unsealed a few more stasis seals and some ice seals he had made. He activated the ice seals and formed a sheet of ice that reached from the ceiling to the floor and quickly slapped the stasis seals on. He took a kanai and carved a smooth surface on the ice and smiled at his handiwork. He grabbed a small stool nearby, that was usually used when he washed his back, and proceeded to examine the seal. It took him a good half hour to decipher it but was pissed beyond belief at what he found. 
It was complex all right. It held a loyalty seal, ensuring that any traitorous thoughts would be correctly steered into nothingness, a seal not unlike the caged bird seal that would allow the user to kill him should he ever decide to betray the villager if someone felt he got out of control, and last, but not least, a summoning seal, like the ones usually used in the Chunin exams, with the kanji for root on it. Naruto was livid. How could Oji San do this to him? How could the kind old man put a seal that could potentially be used to kill him if the haters in the village found it? How could? Mental tire screech. That's not Oji San's style at all. Naruto thought, destroying his previous train of thought. He took a closer look at the seal once again and noticed the root symbol connected with the summoning seal. Root. There's no organization like that in Konoha. Naruto thought. He was about to continue when he noticed the time and a knock on his door. He had about an hour to get ready for the academy and he had a sneaking suspicion as to who was at the door. He sighed and pulled on some baggy black cargo pants before he answered the door. Anko stood in the doorway with a dango stick in her hand and smirked at her, master's, attire. Trying to show off to me Ruto-kun. How sweet. She said sweetly. Naruto rolled his eyes and let her come in. She noticed the giant seal on his back but ignored it considering who he was. Whatever you say hubby Haim. Naruto replied with a smirk as he went towards his bedroom. Enko's smile just got wider, so I'm a princess now huh? You sure know how to compliment a girl Ruto-kun. She countered. Naruto stepped into his doorway and turned his head to look at her. Sure you are. Only princesses could get away with child molestation and not getting punished. He replied before he disappeared into his room. Anko went red-faced. She knew he wasn't old enough for adult matters but his maturity often blinded her to the fact that he was supposed to be a 12-year-old boy. She took a seat on the busted-up couch and picked off another dango from her stick. Naruto emerged about five minutes later with black shinobi sandals, his black cargo pants, a tight black muscle shirt and a black trench coat with golden flames in the bottom and the edges of his sleeves. On the back of the coat, the kanji for defense was emblazoned in gold. All in all, he struck an imposing figure considering he had sculpted muscles all over his body. Anko whistled in appreciation. Nice Naruto-kun, you look good. She commented. Naruto smirked. Thanks Anko-chan. He thought for a second before adding. Say is there an organization called Root in this village? He asked. Anko's face turned grave. Naruto, how do you know about them? She asked seriously. Naruto sighed and proceeded to explain the seal he found. When he reached the part about the summoning seal, Anko started swearing profusely. She eventually calmed down enough to respond. Root is a secret organization founded by Danzo Shimura during the Third Shinobi War. It was supposedly disbanded but everyone knows he is still running it off the books, with secret political backings. He almost always opposes the Hokage in his choices concerning you and he believes every shinobi is a weapon, the best being an emotionless one. She answered him. Naruto frowned deeply, it seems me and the old man have something to discuss. I don't want to trust him but, if what you said is true, I don't want to be associated with Danzo at all. He said. Enko nodded. Good choice Naruto-kun. She looked at the clock and chuckled, you may wanna hurry you're supposed to be getting your team in three minutes. She told him. Naruto glanced at the clock, shit. Gotta go B-Y-E, he said loudly before he shunshin to the academy. Anko chuckled and shut his door before heading out to the interrogation department. Academy. Classroom. The newly minted genin were sitting happily chatting about their soon to be exciting lives. Ooh, someone forgot to tell them the horror of D ranks. Naruto arrived exactly one minute before the bell would ring. He walked through the door and many people stopped and stared at the so called Dobi of the class. Many were surprised, and Sasuke, being the emo brooder that he is, said, Even if you change your clothes, you're still a Dobi, Dobi. Naruto looked at him blanky L before he simply headed up the stairs and sat next to Shino. He was saved from any further comments because Aruka walked in. Naruto kicked back and relaxed as Aruka started on a speech about the duties and privileges of being a genin of Kanahagakur. He noticed a bug crawling across his desk and smiled softly. He put his finger next to the bug and allowed it to climb on. He looked to Shino who nodded and the bug flew back to the boy. Naruto smirked and perked up as Aruka started to call out the teams. Team 1. 
Team 7 Sasuke Uchiha, Kiba Inazuka, and Choji Akamichi led by Junin Kakashi Hitaki. This earned several loud wails from the girls in the room. Sakura was ready to stand up and yell and scream till she got her way, until Naruto blasted her with enough ki to make her go rigid for a while. Uruka noticed but simply shrugged it off having been informed by the Sandame about Naruto's change. Team 8 Sakura Haruno, Hinata Hayuga and Shikamaru Naru led by Junin Kurunai Yuhi. Sakura was quiet, Hinata was silently happy and sad, happy to get her sister figure as a teacher and sad to not have her love interest. Shikamaru simply muttered a troublesome under his breath and went to sleep. Naruto looked to Shino, they both seemed to come to the same conclusion. Team 9 is still active so we go to Team 10 Naruto Uzumaki, Shino Aburame, and Ino Yamanaka led by Junin Yamato. Uruka said finally, Ino's jaw was on the ground, she was stuck with the dead last and the bug boy. Shino and Naruto simply nodded to one another again and went back to being silent. Your Junin sensei should be here soon please wait patiently for them. Uruka said before he picked up the papers and headed out. Naruto simply turned to Shino and said, It will be a pleasure working with you Shino-san. Shino nodded and replied, Likewise Naruto-san. I have yet to thank you for that new queen of mine. Naruto frowned slightly, If you wish to thank me, meet me after our team meeting for a private talk. He said, Shino nodded and they silently waited for their third member or their sensei to introduce themselves. Five minutes later, two people walked in. Yamato is the Mokuden user for those who have trouble placing him. Team 8 with me, said the raven-haired beauty. The members of Team 8 silently rose and went after her. Team 10 please follow me to the roof, the emotionally challenged man said. The members of Team 10 quietly shuffled out to the roof. They spread out and Yamato spoke up. All right, I am Yamato. My likes include plants, my friends, my village, and sushi. My dislikes are traitors, snakes, experiments, and genjutsu. My hobby is gardening, and I don't have a dream for the future I'm willing to share. My abilities include Mokuden techniques and a mixture of water and earth style ninjutsu. Please introduce yourselves in the same manner, he said before pointing at Ino. Ino sighed and said, Ino Yamanaka. My likes are plants, my family, purple and ribs. My dislikes are bigots, rapists and perverts. My hobby is gardening as well and my dream for the future is to be a strong clan head for the Yamanaka clan. My abilities are my clan jutsu which allows me to take over a person's mind. They all nodded, although they were surprised about the lack of Sasuke-kun in that introduction. Yamato pointed to Shino next. Shino nodded and continued, I am Shino Aburame. My likes are my family, friends and bugs. My dislikes are hypocrites, bug haters, pesticides, and traitors. My hobbies include communing with my hive minds and discovering new types of bugs. My dream for the future is to have more hives than my father and to be a strong clan head. My abilities are my bugs which eat chakra or flesh to live, his teammates nodded and everyone looked to Naruto. Naruto nodded as well and said, I am Naruto Uzumaki. My likes are my friends, seals, and ninjutsu. My dislikes are genjutsu, traitors, rapists, most of the civilian populace and perverts. My hobbies are training, reading and gardening, somewhat. My dream for the future. I honestly don't trust you enough to share that. My abilities include a personalized taijutsu style and the cage bunshin no jutsu. I won't reveal more sorry. That earned a frown from Ino and stoic faces from Shino and Yamato. How can he not trust his teammates? Ino thought, slightly offended. His abuse must have been more than I thought, and I wonder if I have to worry about his interest in seals. Yamato thought. It would be logical to assume that he has trust issues given his situation in the village. Shino thought as he remembered the few times he had seen Naruto outside of the academy, and the glares and hate he received for an unknown, and therefore illogical, reason. Yamato nodded, very well. I wish to ask you all a question. There is no right or wrong answer, simply answer in your honest opinion, he said gaining the attention of the genin. If you were given a test where you had to get a bell from your teacher by noon in order to become a genin, and there were only two bells, what would you do? He asked. Naruto thought for a moment before he looked to his teammates and motioned them to come closer. Shino immediately closed the distance and Ino, although reluctantly, quietly followed suit. 
They began to whisper quietly, and Yamato decided to let them give him a plan so he could test their planning skills, seeing as they already passed the teamwork test he had planned to give. They all nodded and Naruto stepped forward, we would work together to get the bells and then tell the sensei that he had to pass all of us or none of us because there has never been a two genin team in Konoha, barring off-duty rosters when a teammate dies. Naruto answered. Yamato chuckled. Very well, you pass. Tomorrow we will meet at training ground 10 for our first training as a team. Please be there at 8 a.m. and be prepared to work. He said before he disappeared in a shunshun. Ino quickly made her way to the stairs and out of the building. She had nothing to speak to her teammates about. Shino turned to Naruto who smirked at him and said, Now Shino-kun, we have much to discuss you and I. Naruto put his hand on Shino's shoulder and they disappeared in a shunshun. They reappeared inside of a spare room in Naruto's lab. Shino took a moment and looked around. It was a simple room, no bigger than your average bedroom, with a table, two chairs, and two cups of tea waiting on the table. Shino's eyebrow rose in curiosity and Naruto answered his unasked question, I sent a clone to create the tea. Hope you don't mind, but I thought we could be comfortable whilst we talk. Naruto said as he motioned Shino to a seat. Shino nodded and sat down, followed by Naruto. Before we get down to the serious stuff, how's your hive doing? Naruto asked. Shino was slightly surprised but answered anyways, they grow steadily every day. I have three hives currently. Two of the regular Kikaichu and one of the special bug that was created when it met you. Naruto smirked and Shino took that as a signal. Naruto-san, why is it that the companion that I sent with you for a week is now able to feed on Yuki and consumes only a quarter of what my other companions eat? He asked curious. Naruto chuckled, that leads into why you are here. But first, I must ask you, what do you think of me? Naruto asked seriously. Shino sat quiet for a moment before responding, I believe you have hidden much of your skills, especially after today's performance, and you are, more than likely, the strongest genin at this time. Your previous behavior was, apparently, a mask set to hide yourself from something. Perhaps the treatment you receive by the villagers, Shino said, he noticed no reaction aside from the slight narrowing of Naruto's eyes but silently confirmed his observation. Overall, I find you to be a kind person with a penchant for pranks that could be a valuable ally and friend. Shino responded honestly. Naruto eyed Shino quietly. Five minutes ticked by before Naruto replied to Shino's observation. I appreciate your honesty, and I would be honored to be your friend. Your observations are spot on and I must say that I am relieved to see that not everyone my age is blinded by their parents or their own preconceptions. One more question before I explain why I brought you here if you would be so kind. Naruto asked. He received a nod from Shino before continuing, what do you think of the teams? He asked. Shino thought for a moment before answering, Team 7 would be an ideal assault and tracking team. Team 8 would be a good ambush and capture, or infiltration team. Our team, is illogical. Ino-san is mismatched with our team. You, Naruto-san, and I would be a good tracking and assault as well. Given your capabilities, this team could possibly be an infiltration and retrieval team, but Ino-san would need heavy training and I would have to be trained specially as well so it is illogical to assume that combination at this time. Ino-san has only her clan jutsu and her abilities do not suit our styles. Until we determine our affinities, I cannot logically comment on Yamato-sensei as I have not seen his abilities or his skills. Shino replied. Naruto nodded, I thought the same thing. Unfortunately, I know why this team was formed and, given your answers, I feel it prudent to answer your earlier question. Naruto said. At this, Shino seemed to lean a bit closer. The Kyubi no Kitsune is a biju and no human, no matter how powerful, can kill a biju. However, a strong human can seal the biju into a container. Naruto noticed Shino's eyebrows nearly disappear into his hair but continued on. The Yondaimi Hokage did not kill the Kyubi as was told the younger generation, instead he sealed it inside a newborn child, because no biju higher than Sanbi can be sealed into an inanimate object. He sealed it into me, Shino-san. Naruto said as he stared directly into Shino's eyes, air goggles. Shino was silent for a moment. Why would we be told he killed it then? He asked. Naruto sighed, you have noticed my treatment amongst the villagers. 
Imagine if the younger generation believed the same as the older. That I was the fox reincarnated. I would be dead, not that they haven't tried it already. Naruto answered. This answers your earlier question. Your Kikaichu can feed on Yuki because my chakra contains a low amount of Yuki. I steadily fed it enough, in a small amount, that it mutated and can consume Yuki. I hope you find it useful. Naruto answered. Shino furrowed his eyebrows. Why would you give me a weapon against yourself? Why would you give a potential enemy a weapon to kill you? Shino asked as he remembered the trust issues Naruto had. Naruto was silent for a moment before responding, I believe you are the best person to stop me should the need arise. You hold no prejudice for me being the container, as you yourself hold Kikaichu. You were taught to think logically before acting. You would also factor in that I allowed you to have these companions and act accordingly. Simply put Shino-san, I have watched many of our classmates, and other ninja that protected me when I was younger, and believe that you are the best suited to control me, should the need arise. Naruto replied. Shino silently went over Naruto's reasons before bowing his head. I am deeply honored to know that you would trust me so easily Naruto-san. He said. Naruto sighed. I don't trust you completely Shino-san, but I do believe in your decisions regarding my tenant. Naruto answered getting a nod of agreement from Shino. Now, this team has a Mokuden user, which the first is rumored to have been able to control a biju with his abilities. A Yamanaka who could tell if I was thinking of leaving or being disloyal to the village, even if it's subconsciously. And, you, who can eat my chakra and my yuki. This team was made solely to control me and I find it extremely hard to work with them, let alone trust them, when their job is to keep me in line. Naruto said answering the question of why he didn't trust his team. Shino nodded, it is logical, considering your situation. However, I understand what you mean. I appreciate you telling me all of this Naruto-san. Shino said as he noticed the time. Naruto nodded, it is fine, please don't tell anyone that I know. I have one last thing I need to take care of before all of this comes out. Naruto said as he thought of the seal that was still being displayed on his back via his stasis seals. Shino nodded and replied, I shall honor your wish Naruto-san. I hope you can come to trust me more. He bowed as Naruto put his hand on his shoulder. Naruto smiled softly, we shall see Shino-san. He replied as he shunshined the two back to the training field before they parted ways. Naruto to his shithole apartment and Shino to his complex. Naruto walked silently back to his apartment as he thought back on his meeting with Shino. Suddenly, he remembered making the tea and setting the table for the meeting. Wait a second, I didn't do that, that was my clone, so I get the memories of my clones. Why didn't I notice this before? He thought. He shrugged a minute later and chuckled, oh well I'll just have to use this later. He walked up to his door and channeled chakra into the seal he had woven into the doorknob. It unlocked with a soft, see, and he stepped inside. He made his way to his room as he heard the door lock behind him and the seal glow around the room before fading. He stepped inside and smirked seeing a sleeping Anko in his bed. She's so clingy, he thought before quickly stepping to his underwear, hopping into bed, and snuggling with his girl. But whoever said I didn't like it? Naruto thought as Anko's arms wrapped around him and pulled him flush against her body. He chuckled softly before falling asleep. Same night. Abarame compound. Shino walked into the compound at 8 p.m. He hadn't had dinner and walked straight to the kitchen so he could find something to eat. He walked in and was surprised to find his father sitting at the table with a cup of tea. Shibi was a good 5 feet 10 inches with a long black tench coat covering his body and the trademark goggles all Abarame wore. He looked up to see Shino walked in and allowed his son to make his dinner and sit before beginning his conversation. You were late. Sochi. That is unlike you. May I inquire as to your whereabouts? Shibi asked. I was with one of my teammates too San. Shino replied before he bit into the sandwich he had made. Shibi sat silently before replied, I see. Would it, perhaps, be Uzumaki San that you were with? Shino nodded. Yes too San. He answered my question as to my new hive. It was, most informative. He said. Shibi's eyebrows rose. What did he tell you? He asked curiously. Shino put down his sandwich and looked at his father. 
I am afraid that I have promised Naruto-san not to reveal his secrets until he chooses to do so himself. Suffice it to say that he chose to give me my hive and that it was not an accident. Please refrain from informing anyone of your suspicions for I believe that Naruto-san has earned his privacy. Shino replied seriously. Shibi stared at his son for a moment before nodding. I will do as you ask Sochi. However, if things get out of hand, I will have to inform the Hokage. He said. Shino nodded in agreement. I understand too San. I will simply have to ensure that things do not get out of hand. Shino said. Shibi smiled behind his trench coat and stood. I will leave that task to you then Sochi. Good night. He said before leaving the room. Shino bowed his head in respect and replied, Thank you to San. Good night. Time skip. One week. Naruto's lab. The last week had gone rather well. Yamato had taught them tree walking and they had all got it down in three days. Naruto already had it mastered but made it look like he was working on it. He didn't want anyone to know his true strength until he removed that bloody seal from his back. Ino was, surprisingly, only a fangirl because she thought it would help Sakura to have a rival. That plan backfired and Ino was now working hard to gain some real Kunoichi skills. She didn't seem to pay much attention to Naruto but had commented that her dad often asked about her team. Yamato was pleasantly civil to Naruto, much to his surprise. He taught all of the genin equally and actually seemed to enjoy it. He had shown a few of his Mokuden jutsus, like his Moku Bunshin and his Mokuden, Mokujoheki, Wood Release, Wood Locking Wall which had seemed pretty useful in a fight. He did seem to watch Naruto the most, but he knew that old man Hokage had ordered it along with severe political threats, so as to ensure that Naruto wasn't under Hikari's influence. It still made him laugh when he thought about their irrational fear of a woman that loved him. Shino was coming to be Naruto's best friend and they could often be seen working together during their D-rank missions. Shibi and Shino had both kept their word and had not informed anyone of Naruto's secret, not that Shibi knew much, and Naruto was happy to see he could trust someone with his secrets after so long. He really didn't like hiding everything but it was necessary for now. Currently, Naruto was working on the seal that was on his back. He had made liberal use of Cage Bunshin and had several teams studying the separate parts of the seal. He himself was looking at the loyalty seal and couldn't decide between praising the man who made this, or throwing him into the deepest pits of hell. He was leaning toward the latter. Either this guy was a seal master of the highest caliber and is hiding seals that I can't see or he just didn't give a rat's ass about the target of this seal. If I even try to remove this thing, there's a good chance I'll fry my brain. Naruto said in frustration. Suddenly he found his head in between two fleshy globes and a sweet lilting voice flowing into his ears. Calm yourself Naruto-kun, a woman said. Naruto took a deep breath and smiled softly. Good, now, guess who? She said smirking behind him as she wrapped her arms around his neck and pulled him closer. Naruto chuckled, I'm gonna guise. Hikari chan, he said childishly. Hikari laughed as she stepped back and twirled when he spun around in his chair. She winked at him and giggled, good guess. How did you know? She asked mock pouting. Naruto simply smiled, Anko chan is on a mission for this week so it had to be you. Besides, you were due back about three days ago. He replied as he gave her a look that said, start explain. Hikari chuckled nervously and said, sorry about that. She turned to the hallway, oi, Ami-chan, get in here. She yelled into the hallway. Naruto sweat dropped as a woman stepped into the room. She had long silvery white hair that reached her rump. Bright electric blue eyes and a body most women would kill for. She was a good DD breast size, like Hikari. Her waist was slim but her ass was large and plump, perfect for Ing, not that Naruto thought that, yet. Her legs were slender but obviously held muscle by the way she walked. She had on a light blue yukata with simple sandals and she smiled warmly at Naruto. Hello Naruto-san it is good to meet you, she said formally. Naruto sat silently before turning and glaring at Hikari. Who said you could bring someone here? He asked angry that one of the only people he trusted just willingly gave away his hideaway. Hikari visibly shrank back. Ami-chan has been my friend for centuries Naruto-kun. Besides, she's only here because you have an interest in Oropido. 
she said saddened by his anger. Naruto sighed and looked back at the woman. I apologize for being so rude but I have trouble trusting people and I don't know you one bit. My name is Naruto Uzumaki. May I ask what your is? I assume it's not Ami-chan. Naruto said with a slight smirk. The woman had a tick on her forehead for being called that but sighed and nodded, my name is Amaterasu. Naruto looked at her curiously until she rolled her eyes and smiled, yes I am the goddess of the sun. I know you may be skeptical but consider who I came with. She said. Naruto looked over at Hikari, who was still rather sad that Naruto had gotten upset with her, and then chuckled, good point. Amaterasu-sama, may I inquire as to your reason for being here? Hikari-chan said you were here because of Oropito but, why? He asked curiously. Amaterasu sighed and motioned to the table. Naruto nodded and the human, demon and god sat down. Naruto sent a cage bunshin to get some tea and Amaterasu spoke, Orochimaru is actually the reincarnation of the eight-headed snake Yamada no Orochi. He seeks to regain his immortality and tear down the Kami's, realms. Unfortunately, Kami's cannot directly interfere in mortals' affairs until a sure threat has been recognized. As it is, he holds only a bastardized version of immortality and nowhere near enough power to tear down the heavens. However, every Kami is allowed certain privileges. He holds the Kusanagi, which is actually my blade. I am allowed, by Kami law, to, retrieve, it from him. She said. Naruto nodded in acknowledgement. Hikari had briefed him on several celestial and demonic disputes in case they ever affected him through her. Naruto's clone had returned and set down three sets of tea for the people. Naruto noted that Hikari still looked sad and sighed. He leaned over and tapped her shoulder. She turned and found herself on the receiving end of a rather heated. They broke apart slightly flushed and breathing hard. Naruto smirked, next time just tell me you're bringing friends over. And quit being sad it just doesn't suit you, Naruto said. Hikari smiled and nodded as a blushing Amaterasu cleared her throat. The two future mates blushed and Amaterasu chuckled, good to see you two so happy. In any case, I need assistance in finding and fighting Orochimaru so I was wondering if we could join forces so to speak. I know you want to hunt him down for what he did to Anko-san. What do you say? She asked. Naruto looked to Hikari who nodded. I think this would be a mutually beneficial thing so yes, your assistance would be most helpful, Naruto said as they shook hands. I would like to inform you that there's no way I can fight Orochimaru at my current level. Amaterasu nodded, I know that but we have time to fix it, besides we need to find him first. I have a feeling that he will come after this village because it stands for everything he hates and it's the place that denied him power as Hokage. She said. Hikari nodded in agreement, right? he's awfully conceited that way. She turned to Naruto, we should up your training and try to find out how to do elemental manipulation. Naruto nodded, that's a good idea. However, this seal I'm working on comes first, he said. The two females looked at him curiously until he sighed and explained the seal to them. Needless to say, they were both pissed. Hikari was even a little mad at herself for not noticing it. Amaterasu was livid that they could so callously treat another human this way. Naruto shook his head when they both commented on destroying something. We mustn't stoop to their level girls. I will prove them wrong about me, but, even if I can't, I'll still protect those precious to me and say damn those who believe me to be a demon. Naruto said. Hikari and Amaterasu smiled. Now let's get to work on this seal. Amaterasu, if you have any knowledge, it'd be much appreciated. If not, then please make yourself at home, Naruto said. Luckily, Amaterasu had some knowledge in seals and another view was always welcome. Time skip. Three days. Girls night out. Anko had returned from her mission yesterday and had met the new female now residing at Naruto's hideaway. Naruto had given her three special seal tags that she had asked for and she patted her trench coat pocket happily. It had taken him most of the week to supply the chakra to them but he was happy to help her out. He had also told her that she could reveal her curse mark removal but to keep just WHO did it until he removed that pesky seal from his back. Anko smiled seeing the girls all sitting at a corner table and promptly ran over and joined them, discreetly slipping a genjutsu and sound disruption seal onto the booth. Naruto really is useful with those things. 
She thought happily as she took her seat next to Kurenai. Hello girls, she said cheerily. Hannah smiled at her. Hey Anko, how's it going? She asked. Anko smiled brightly. Great why do you ask? She replied. Hannah shrugged. You just seem happier than usual. She said. Anko chuckled. There's a reason for that. But first, what were you girls talking about? She asked. Yu Gao sighed. Those anti-rape seals that have been going around recently. We can't seem to get our hands on some. She said sadly. Kurinai nodded. They only seem to sell them to the Kunoichi who were sent specifically into seduction. That's not even mentioning the price. She said. Anko nodded her head as well but thought, well of course. Naruto-kun made sure that those girls got them first so that they could protect themselves. After all, it was child's play for him to get the list of girls from the administration building. Talk about low security, although, he can hide from Anbu. Hannah shook her head, I just wish we could get each a one. You never know when they could come in handy, she added. Meanwhile, Higurashi shop, Naruto performed his version of the henge, the actual transformation because he pours enough chakra into it, and walked inside. He was a tall man at 6 feet 8 inches with a long black trench coat, sunglasses, a face mask, and a hat. He tipped his hat to Tenton who nodded and made his way to the back. He smiled seeing Hiroshi working the forge. Hiroshi looked up and smiled at one of his best sources of income. Ah Tatsumaki-san, it's good to see you. Those anti-rape seals are genius. They sell extremely well, he said smiling. Tatsumaki raised an eyebrow. How much have you been selling them for? He asked. Hiroshi smiled. You sold them to me for $50, but the demand was so big after the first batch that they have been going for about $200 minus $300 per seal. We are making a huge profit. He said happily. I don't know the Ryu conversion so sorry guys. If someone could help me out, I'd be grateful. Now Hiroshi was no bad guy, but he was a businessman and Naruto understood that. However, these seals were special. They were for preventing something that Naruto utterly despised and he was not happy with the price of his invention. Tatsumaki glared at Hiroshi through his glasses. Hiroshi visibly shrank because if he lost this resource he would lose a very large portion of his business. You mean to tell me that my anti-rape seal is becoming inaccessible to the very people that it was made to protect? He asked angrily. Hiroshi frowned. Most can still afford it but your demands have been met. All of the girls in seduction and infiltration have received at least two, at discounted prices. I just didn't think that the price would be driven so high. He replied, Hiroshi may have been a large man, and a retired chunin, but he knew that seals masters were very rare and very powerful. Tatsumaki, sighed, very well. Drop the price to $75 minus $100 per. You still turn a profit and it becomes affordable to all kunoichi aside from Genin because they have no real need for it. If they do, well they will have to save, it takes too much time and energy to make them for any less, he said and Hiroshi nodded. Tatsumaki smiled behind his mask, now, I have something you may be interested in. Hiroshi's eyes sparkled, whenever, Tatsumaki, showed him something new, he was always assured something interesting. I know your daughter is a weapons mistress, well, Imagine if she could put a seal on her enemy that gave him a magnetic charge. He said. Hiroshi smiled brightly and the gleam in his eye brightened as, Tatsumaki, pulled out a tag and stuck it on a nearby wall. Kai, he said as he focused chakra to it. Immediately, all the tools big enough to fly flew straight into the wall. Hiroshi's smile threatened to split his face. This way, even if the person dodges, they will probably get hit because of the magnetic field. What do you think? Tatsumaki asked. Hiroshi turned to Tatsumaki with dollar signs in his eyes. How much and where do I sign? He asked earning a chuckle from his partner. Back with the girls, Anko's hand reached into her pocket and pulled out three tags before slapping them in front of her friends. Kurinai picked one up and her jaw dropped. H how did you get these? She asked surprised. The other girls picked up their tags and surprise adorned their faces as well. Anko shrugged with a soft smile on her face, I know the guy who makes them. I'm afraid I can't tell you who yet but I should be able to tell you in about a month if my guess is correct. She said. 
Hannah stared at her incredulously. How do you know this guy? He's gotta be a seal master to make something so complex. She said. Enko's smile widened slightly and she pulled down her collar to show her curse mark, or rather her lack of curse mark. It's the same guy that removed this thing from me. The same guy that saved me from being raped. So you can understand why I'm not going to tell you. She said softly. What? Rang out across the table as the three girls sat stunned at what was just told to them. A hey, Enko, if what you say is true, then why doesn't he showcase his skills? He'd be heralded as a seal's master. Kurinai said shocked. Enko shook her head, I can't say. All I will say is that he will come out eventually but he refuses to do so now because he would be in danger. She said. Hannah nodded, all right. I say we drop this matter until Anko tells us because I don't want to lose her friendship or her trust. She stated. Anko looked at Hannah and smiled, thanks Hannah Chan. Hannah simply nodded back and the girls agreed to keep it quit until Anko told them otherwise. They spent the rest of the day in the spa, simply enjoying themselves. Anko waved goodbye to her friends as she made her way back to the hideout. Time warp. After Naruto left the Higurashi shop. Naruto had removed the henge, but bought some sunglasses that seemed to complete his look. He made his way back to his lab, after making sure no one was following him, and entered to find the groups of clones working with Hikari and Amaterasu to try and unravel the seal in a way so as to not destroy his brain. He sighed as he sat down at his desk and looked at the seal again. He'd been working on it nearly non-stop and he was honestly tired of it. Hikari stopped helping the clones and walked over to Naruto. She dragged herself over the chair and wrapped her arms around him. What's wrong Naruto? She asked. Naruto leaned back into her embrace and replied, I'm just tired of this seal. Hikari frowned, then why don't you let your clones handle it and work on something else? It's not like the seal is going anywhere. She said. Naruto sighed, you're right, I just don't like the idea of anyone being able to control me like this. Naruto told her. Hikari nodded, I understand but it seems that the seal also transmits a chakra signal to the user, probably Danzo. You could place a suppression seal on it but he may notice it. She said. Naruto slumped in his chair before sighing again, you're right. I'll wait till I'm closer to unraveling this before I suppress it. I'll try and unlock that last seal on my arm instead. He said. Hikari smiled and turned Naruto's head to him lightly. Good idea. Maybe we can figure out who that man is nay. She said. Naruto nodded and got to work. Hikari smiled seeing Naruto focus fully again, without distractions, and went back to helping the clones. Amaterasu was watching and smiled seeing her longtime friend have such a good relationship with someone like Naruto. Hikari had told her almost everything she could about Naruto. Hikari knew that it was safe to do so simply because Kamis did not interfere in the mortal realm so she wouldn't give out anything, besides being friends for centuries helps too. Naruto spent the next three hours slowly applying chakra to the complex seal on his arm, trying to find the unlocking mechanism inside the array. He slowly pushed chakra through the various lines of the seal, searching for dead ends, traps, and false releases. It was much like a grid that had pieces and sections that were nothing but traps. Anko walked in just as a poof of smoke surround Naruto's arm and he yelled, Eureka! I got it! He looked up and smiled at the women, and clones, in the room, looking every bit the twelve-year-old he was. The girls all smiled and Naruto turned back to the leather-bound research journal with a note taped onto the front. Naruto looked at it curiously until he picked it up and started to read. The girls came and quietly read it over his shoulder. The end. Now we will see you in the next video.